This is Jordan Grace, and you're listening to the Social Suplex Podcast Network. BWB, this is One Nation Radio. You better get it right. Rich Ladder, James Boyd came to give them life. The Blackest Wrestling Podcast has come to kick all ass and drop it six feet if they kick it trash. Word, let me welcome y'all to something different. And if you dig it, man, you should let some friends listen. We be getting it in, that's on the regular, dude. Ravish and flow, but this shit rule. See, James don't rap, so I had to break it down. The whole network, man, we coming for the crown. Raps in the columns, I keep them both covered Making the beats too, so the listeners can bump it Hit us with the rating, yeah, I'm saying it's a five Before you hit a talk, bob your head side to side It's One Nation Radio, and this is the beginning It's Rich, and I'm here with James It's time to listen to One Nation you got to the power of the pyramid this is Mike Sempervivi from WrestlingObserver.com. Check me out on Wrestling Observer Live every day. And also check out your boys, Rich and James, on One Nation Radio. Uh, this is Kenny Omega. We're listening to One Nation Radio. Check it out, guys. These guys know what's up. Big Kenny Omega fans. That's all it that counts to me. Goodbye and good night. Hey. Hey, folks. Welcome to this week's edition of One Nation Radio. My name is James Boyd. Here we have Rich Lotto. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Just uh, happy to be here another week, and um, you know, just just enjoying life and um, hanging out. How about you, man? Uh, more of the same. Uh, more of the same. It, it's weird. Uh, we're in a weird spot right now with all the stuff going on, and like a lot of the guessing of because you know there's two pay per views almost back to back, not back to back, but almost back to back with AEW. So it's like. Are we going to have that rush to the finish like how we had last year where it's like, what's on the card? What's on the card? Or are they going to get it done all, you know, ready to have everybody, people, you know, anticipating this kind of thing. But um, especially when you have that hour long match where you're kind of like, well, you have the shows going. Maybe we shouldn't have done that. I enjoyed the match more than most people did. But I was like, in retrospect, even though I even though I did enjoy the match more than most people, maybe I want for the best to just give, give away half the show like that. Uh, so, but yeah, like, um. I thought that, like, you know, WNBA weekend, seeing some of the uh, exhibition matches for uh, Team USA on the men's side, um, I, I, it's, it's been some interesting stuff going on this weekend. And also, you know, do we need, do we need to talk about, do we need to talk about uh, the, the, the biggest thing that's going on in the world? I think we do before we get there, though. Okay. <laughs> um, so I, I gotta get some plugs out the way first. Get your merch. Uh, one lifetime worldwide.com. Uh, more stuff going up on there all the time. A lot of, a lot of dope stuff. You want to get your one nation radio merch, uh, as well as, um, your one lifetime merch. Um, I did AEW unrestricted, uh, over this past week. I was on there with, uh, Aubrey and Will Washington, Mikey Ruckus. Um, the video version actually dropped today. So if you want to watch that on YouTube, go ahead, uh, light up the comment section for me. Um, I did. I taped an episode of uh, "Pardon My Leisure," I believe it is, or "Pardon My Fresh." Excuse me, I'm confusing that with with uh, <laughs> the, there's something called like uh, "Pardon My Leisure," which is uh, it's like this creative thing. But "Pardon My Fresh" uh, with my man A.O. Baker, and it was like a kind of one hour end up interview like about you know the stuff i've been working on in music uh kind of like my mentality what got me into music what uh is all the stuff i'm doing with that in the world of professional wrestling as well and just like a big deep dive on you know my history and all that so that's going to be out on thursday uh so keep your eyes open for that i will be uh sharing that as well big shout out to my man ao baker who i'd love to get on this show um at some point one day um, but yeah, man, um, <laughs> I guess we should start with, uh, the leader of the free world. N- no, not someone from eight mile, uh, <laughs> deciding he's about to move around James. Um, Joe Biden has, uh, that man hit the notes app. That man <laughs> is basically like. Fuck y'all niggas, I'm out of here. Like one one of those uh, type deals. So um, Joe Biden basically uh, said that he's not going to further pursue uh, president of the United States in the next election. Uh, It actually has been confirmed like just before we went live that Kamala Harris ended up uh, getting all the delegates needed to officially secure 
the nomination. So it looks like it's going to be uh, Harris versus Trump. Um, the whole thing with uh, Joe Biden was, you know, it was wild. You know, and I, I've never really I've never seen anything like this in my life. So I didn't really know how to react, how I should react. Um, I, I saw it and part of me was, you know, I felt bad for Joe Biden. Uh, it, it, it's, it feels like somebody just walked in the room and tapped him on the shoulder like a hey, big dog. It ain't working like it ain't happening, big dog. Like, I, I don't know who that is. Who, who's the big Joker person? I don't know. I don't know who that is. But like the, the money started moving a certain way. And the rush of of funds that has been raised in the last like twenty four hours, you know, it's Monday night is staggering. Recorded. Just incredible numbers for um for Harris with you know the, the amount of fundraising, large donors, and and she's already swinging on them too. So, um, you know, just in a uh, you know way way with it, you know, just how I feel, like I said, I felt bad for for Joe Biden because you know I think about you know the older people in your life or you know older people when you got to tap them on the shoulder. Like I, I can imagine like, you know, like fortunately, like it's crazy. My, my father already passed away. So there wasn't like a time where I was going to have to tap him on the shoulder and be like, I got to take your keys. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I didn't get that. You know, my mom's still alive and you know, there's a lot of people that will have to have to do that with either an older, older family member, a parent, a grandparent, something like that. And I imagine it's not an easy conversation to have, a lot of people, you know, old folks have pride, feel like they, you know, have a lot to offer still. And then it's just like, you know, I like, like I said, I, I wasn't a fan of how, how Joe was treated. I feel like, you know, in the moment I was like, I didn't know if there would be anybody else that'd be able to carry the amount of, um, you know, diverse voters that he would. Uh, and it basically, you know, there's one goal, you know, kind of. And I, I hate to get all political on the show, but it's a, you know, it's a uh, whole thing here. Like it's surrounding us in everyday life. So, you know, <laughs> you, you see what's on deck, what could possibly like what got accomplished before, what could possibly be on deck. You saw the Supreme Court has already been upended. Mm-hmm. There's no room for fucking around. I feel like. Yep. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I think uh, Harris is is an exciting candidate. You know, it already feels like there's a new energy, like around you know, like people feel like energized. Yeah, um, they do, and I wish I remember what her you know what her campaign policies were when she was when she was running for the um for the um gov or. Sorry, with the Democratic nomination uh, four years ago, I don't really remember how strong her policy was in in my in my own opinion, obviously. Uh, but um, it was it was funny because you know after the first debate, you're watching just like these two guys, and they're embarrassing both of them. The problem was. One side did not care how embarrassing their old white guy was. The other side was like, oh, this is going to this is going to completely break our blo- our voting block if we if we don't make a move. The other side, they're voting. They're voting for who they want regardless. Right. They it, it, they putting it through no, ma- no matter what. Right. Um. So they they had to make a move. And it was funny because like everybody at the time was looking around like, hey, man, there's some talk from, you know, insider saying in the money saying hey this is bad and um you know it was very similar to you know being a fan of college sports and seeing like a big program um with a lot of money around and a lot of people in in the building a lot of people uh, with the money talking around and getting and leaking out saying hey this needs to change otherwise money's getting pulled funny's getting pulled support's getting pulled uh make it affect future it can affect the future of the of the um, university slash the uh, party, and it was like, yeah, this this sounds like it's over for him. But I don't know. It says it seems it was it was one of those you know it what felt like because it's so unprecedented. Even though everything over the last almost decade has been unprecedented, it felt like I know what this normally feels like. But is it actually going to happen? And lo and behold, we're unprecedented times. Like a person that. Won the presidency had to step down because their money was in support was leaving them. 
Um, so yeah, I just, um, you know, I, 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 that, that statement you made about earlier about, you know, someone being at a certain age and like, you kind of feel like, Hey, this isn't for you anymore. Like your day has passed and it's, and it's a hard thing to have to tell somebody that and people are prideful and people, um, you know, achieve things and be told they can no longer do things. You know, the, the old saying, you know, um, well, or once an adult, you know, twice a child. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a microcosm of this. And, you know, it's been going on with the Democratic uh, Party for a long time. We're like, you know, and also it just in general with like the way I was talking to Julian about this. We talked about a lot of things the other day. <sighs> a lot of things. We can't talk about it on air, but um, uh, we spent a good bit talking about, um, you know, our political differences, me and him. Uh, <laughs> and, and like. I explained to him like, yeah, man, you just look at, and he agreed because obviously, but because uh, it's straightforward and obvious, but it's like you look at like what is going on in society with like the wealth distribution, like the change in like so many of the older people are still in power and p- place of power, and as a, at a, as opposed to time like you know forty years ago they've been moved out. Like no boomers still have an overwhelming amount of the wealth and power and political clout, um, and you saw that with you know. Four years ago, with with Biden, with Bernie Sanders, with Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren, with Trump, and that's four years past. And what do we what do we still have at the debate table? Damn, damn near ran into a rematch again. Right, right. And it's like this needs to this needs to change. Like, I understand they have the they because of what has happened in you know the greed of of capitalism, like. These people have so much sway and have so much money or whatever else, and the old money don't ever seem to die out. <laughs> um, uh, it's it's just that like it they are so isolated and they are not even with people that we think know some things. They are still missing the part where like they are so disconnected from you know forget mo- forget young millennials, Zers, yeah. right? Like. People born in the '90s are, they, you know, like my, I have a little, I have a younger brother who's now he turned, I turned twenty, he's he's twenty seven now. He, so that means he's been able to vote for multiple elections now. He think of who he's had to vote for. Had Why would vote, you be engaged? He, by he had to, he had to vote. For, he, he what was eligible for him to vote for because he graduated in two thousand fifteen, right? That's either. Obviously, he would never vote for Donald Trump, but it's like he's either voting for, and he doesn't, I, I don't think he actually does vote, but that's neither there. But like his options are Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump or Joe Biden. It was going to be Donald Trump or Joe Biden again. It's like, what, what, what younger people, like, what is going to drive them to, um, what is going to energize them to come out and vote and have political, um, awareness? Aside from just gloom, outside of because like it's one thing to be moved by negativity, we saw that right, like we, we saw that with Biden, but like it's another thing to be mm-hmm. like actually energized in a way like you know say Obama was in, in two thousand eight. Like it's it's one th- you can't just consistently have people be moved by you got to save the world again. Yeah, move you got to save fear. the world again. Like you don't want that to happen. I'm like, well, what are we going up for? Like you know, right. I want to say I was, uh, I think I was 19 the first time I voted. Maybe it was like 2008 or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, this 44-year-old guy walks on the scene. And it just, you know, everything he's saying at the time, it just feels powerful. It feels inspiring. It feels um, feels like, you know, there's a different way to achieve it felt things in act- the world. It felt actually presidential after we had eight years of nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, look at the predecessor and stuff like that. And yeah. then, like, you know, it's been a very interesting world since 2008. And Yikes. it's like, you know, I don't think it's anything like like you can just look at the old older, even up to 2012 with like Mitt Romney being involved and just the way people spoke to each other. Right. So, like, even though the the ugliness that Obama faced I felt like, you know, and they, but everyone had to do it a little bit more buttoned up then. Mm-hmm. Since then, we've completely, like, let the titties out. So, like, since then, like, with right. the way, you know, Trump, con- like, the stuff that's going to be coming at Harris is going to be just unhinged. Worse. It's got, like, the stuff that you thought that was so bad about Biden or Hillary Obama, it's it's going to be worse. 
Um, uh, one one thing I wanted to point, I wanted to mention that like, how much of that do you think is the byproduct of the negativity of the algorithm involved in the discussion now to the discourse of this? Because like, it's a it's a po- it's a toxic place. Politics is already nasty. We've gotten more uh, volatile and and more polarized politically uh, in in the national landscape. Hell, state landscape. <laughs> Folks are more radicalized. Like, right, right. And Folks are more ra- radicalized on both sides. And what, in what some part, cases, what part of that do you think is baked into the algorithm tricking us? Oh, it's all not even it, tricking. Not, obviously, not all of it. Because obviously, oh. once you put a black president in the Oval Office, this is already on the path. And then you get social media. Then you get Twitter basically modernizing social media. And, and, and what happens is. The algorithm's not tricking us anymore. The algorithm is being built to give us this. Like this yep. is like, yep. like, like Twitter now it has been. <laughs> y'all know it's been upended, right. uh, so to speak. Right. And but then you, we already know Facebook was a hellhole. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I talked to you about it uh, off off air um, over the weekend. Like there was a girl that friended me on Facebook from my high school days, and like we weren't we like I knew her. Right. But like we weren't like we were friends, but it's like I would add anybody that I actually know. Right. So I added her and then like I look at her page, scroll, a couple scrolls, praying for Trump, pr- Trump, 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 Trump. I'm like, fuck. Like, I'm not even on this app. I got the only reason I was on this app to be alerted to it because I got a, a, a friend notification. And now it's this. Fuck. Like, this is the this is the the cesspool that I've been dealing with for, for the um, damn near a decade now on 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 Facebook. Like yeah. I, I I I don't go there because I don't like to see them. My like so many of my Facebook friends or so many of my high school friends turn into bigots. I, I just don't. So yeah, um, or fundamentally, uh, fundamentally hate me even though we're friends on Facebook. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> <laughs> One of the good ones, James. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely what it is. It's like, I was, and I was another conversation with Julie where it's like we grew up going to these white to these white schools, these white public schools, and like we had these friends, and like it wasn't that y'all like, think it, y'all was special. It was it was actually it was like the the part of like these white people didn't see us and humanize us and then uh, to some extent humanize us humanize us and they feel like all black people you know are humans or, or or you know people with thoughts and dreams and feelings it was oh these people that I actually know are different these other ones are still subhuman that's the, that's the, that's the trick when you grow up and you get older and you realize like the way they talk about you like bro I'm they be like no you're different no I'm not. I promise right. you, I'm not. Right. You want to know how I know? Because I know these people, these motherfuckers in general. You talking about? So yeah, yeah man. Um, but anyway, like yeah, I, this all. So I was just wondering, like you know, hey, yo, I was going to put a huge percentage on it, but like, do you think it's most of the lion's share to blame for this? Do you think it's as far as uh you know Twitter amping this up, like unintentionally, unintentionally, unintended consequences in it? Like how much do you think is just like. We've gotten so wrong with discourse. People tweet out whatever they think without, you know, actually thinking, and it goes out in the air, air, and it just bats around nonstop for twenty four seven. It's for a big years cir- and years and years, and now a decade over. It's a big circle. A lot of people have retreated, ret- or t- retreated into their own echo chambers again. Yep. But you know, as you can see with January sixth and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, it's it's disheartening a lot of it, but. You know, maybe this is like a, a step to where, you know, a necessary move that had to happen, happened. Like, if you were this whole, oh, we got, you know, all we got is two old white men to vote for. Well, you, you got got something else now. You know, a button was pressed and, yeah. you know, you have another option here. So yeah. um, am I confident that America will, will support a black woman to defeat Donald Trump when, you know, Hillary Clinton was right there, you know, and you would think it would almost be easier for Hillary Clinton to defeat Donald Trump. Uh, But that wasn't the case. Um, You know, so what all one can do is uh, just see, you know, how how this whole thing goes and, um, you know. Hope hope for the best. You know, I I hate to be optimistic, (laughs) James, but that's all I really have here. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right. That's all you got. It's like, cause like, I'm just, I, you know, my, uh, my expectations are so low. 
Yeah. And it is not it's not whether or not she can do the job. It's not whether or not Trump should be disqualified or he's a fella or whatever else. Like they folks ain't gonna care about that. They don't care about like the, like the magical swing voter, I, I'd love to know who the fuck they are. Like Caleb was talking to us about a swing about a uh, swing voter the other day, and I was like, bro, I don't. Who are these people? <laughs> like who are people to be swaying one way or the other who after this happens? Niggas? Yeah. Who are these niggas? Yeah. Yeah, and my niggas, they not, they're not black. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> they're not. Well, they, we call them niggas. They're not niggas. Um, right. So yeah, um, it's 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 gonna be interesting to see how this goes, and I'm just like, well. Biden didn't win Georgia. Do I think that? Do I think that uh, Kamala Harris is going to win Georgia after Stacey Abrams can win Georgia? Yeah, uh, you know it, it's so like, like the mid like do I, like we talked about it, like the Midwest. Yeah, the Midwest going to be I, difficult. I, you would imagine, you know, walking into Ohio. I don't know. I mean, Ohio is already a dub at this point for 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 the, for uh, Republicans, but still, it's just you know. It is. We we will see. We'll see how this goes. Like I, I think if I had to guess, I think that Kamala Harris will win the the popular vote, but she would not. But I I I just do not see the path to uh, is it path two seventy, the yeah. path two seventy. See, uh, you know, there's still some time. We'll see how this goes. Whatever else, but mm, how how, how furious know. is Trump? You know, like you know, one week ago, you know, he, he was shot at. And you know there were people walking around. Um, that's that's baked into the math of all of this. That's why I also know. think that also made it easy for Biden to be like, I ain't winning after that after that shit. So there's like, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. So it was like this thing that completely took that out the news cycle or whatever. You know, as people was walking around with their ear bandages and shit. Um, this is like completely like 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 nobody cares anymore that that you were shot at. So like. He, you know he's gonna have to try to milk that a little bit more, but I, I think the people have moved on. The news cycle is gone is has shifted here. So um, I don't know, man. You know we'll see. Yeah, we we will see. We will talk about it as it gets closer. You yeah. know, I feel I feel like we're headed towards the disappointment, but not surprise. <laughs> I, oh, feel like, I feel like we're really headed towards it. <laughs> oh man! All right. Um. WNBA All Star Game. Let's let's talk about it. Let's okay. talk about it, man. Um, I loved this game. Um, watched it from beginning to end, and it was just like such a great atmosphere. It felt like a playoff game. Uh, it felt like you know a real like moment in time where it's like, yo, one of those special All Star games, like two thousand one, two thousand three. I'm talking about the NBA ninety eight. Mm-hmm. Um, 2011 2012 it it felt like there was like obviously real competition there was like a message that it seemed like definitely one team wanted to send to the other one there were juicy storylines everywhere there was new blood there was old old money in there and there was like a lot of just like great talent on display that were like yeah man i'm here you know i am I have some, you know, this is how I play my game. And it was interesting to see like the players, like, and how fast, like, I feel like I've kind of fallen into like knowing how this league works, like mm-hmm. with everything as, you know, they were introducing the all-stars and man, I was like, yo, like watching John Quill Jones, like play with Caitlin was like incredible. Just like seeing like the, the passes and, um, and the offense, offensive precision, uh, uh NECA Gumake, just like, uh, just, just dominating the mid post. Um, I, you know, the whole thing with, with Cheryl Reeve, you know, coaching Team USA, talking a whole bunch of shit. And then, you know, another time, Caitlin is, you know, been on the other side, slamming her down. While, um, while you know, sending out a message, hey, hey, Kelsey Plum, hey, go out there and face, go out there and guard her for not, pick her up 94. Yeah. What are we doing? Yep. Like, in an all star game. Okay. Yeah. Gee, I wonder if you're being petty or not. Yeah. Um, Angel Reese was was phenomenal all game. Just coming in in short short spurts, just shell shocking the entire front line of Team USA. Just like with her energy, with her rebounding, and then her end to end precision. And it was just like you know the fir- first half. It was just a lot of high level basketball, mm-hmm. and then in that third quarter, it was like, all right, Caitlin. <laughs> pretty much decided like i'm about to go into magic johnson steve nash playmaker mode y'all are going to focus on me 
But then all of a sudden, you're leaving Arike Agumbawale to do whatever she wants, and she microwaved Vinnie Johnson. Them. They checked in Kelsey Mitchell, and they had Kelsey Mitchell and Arike Agumbawale looking like Stephon Marbury and Allen Iverson <laughs> in the 2001 All Star game. It was incredible. Just the amount of deep three pointers. Like Arike had the game that people wanted Caitlin to have. So, but yeah. Caitlin was like, "Yeah, man, I'll step out the way," and it it was immediate. Like you could you could see the amount of the leadership and the control she had over the the starting you know unit. Like yep. y'all, she was like, "Y'all be where y'all gonna be. I'm gonna get you the ball," and they trusted her. And it felt like it felt like this was the moment that the league had nowhere else to run when it came to these rookies and the narratives around them, whether they would be well, accepted by other players and stuff like that. This yeah. felt like. Yo, they they clearly respect them. All the, all the bullshit is largely over. Like as far as like skepticism of mm-hmm. their game, you know the DJ Carrington is not going to be nice to Caitlyn the next time she's on the floor or anything. But it's like, hey, I I respect you as a player. That's like I I think all that is you know been achieved. And then they just started. They put the beat them down on them. Like they yeah. were up by twenty at one point, so they called the dogs off. Yeah, I mean, there's also the part where, like, you know, you mentioned uh, Arike going nuts. Is like Caitlin was on the was at the was going to sub in for her, and then like all of a sudden she was like, "Nope, I'm going to sit my ass down." Like, um, she was going nuts. Like she the, the like it was a it was just a ridiculous display of just shooting, uh, from 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 Ogumo Ali. Like it was it was wild. Like it was one of those like, oh my god, LeBron just scored 18 points in like three minutes of gameplay against Milwaukee. It was one of those like, oh, like, oh my God, Clay was, you know, scored 30 and a quarter. It was, she was going nuts in the second half because all of it was in the second half. Um, then, you know, I, I think, you know, the mission on the losing side, Brianna, Brianna Stewart, she balled. She balled. Yeah, she had like 31. But, you know, it wasn't enough. And like, ultimately, you look at the, you look at the box score and you're like, okay, so what did this game really come down to? It came down to Team USA's turnovers. Um, and yeah, like, just uh just a really fun game in the closing stretch and um I'm just gonna remember Enrique Gumawale going nuts. Like that was one of those like, you know, this is why people want to see competitive all star games and people actually try to some extent to make this it like to to the to, the, to even the novice's eye you can see them trying. And that's the that's the difference. That's the difference. And it was it was cool to see. It was really cool to see. Like and, as um, angry and as upset as I was watching the men's All Star game this year, was as happy as I was watching the women's game. Um, I thought the teams largely played to the personalities of their coaches, which was <laughs> Cheryl Reeves, you know, uptight, angry, kind of like you know, curmudgeon of the past, the old school of of the WNBA, and mm-hmm. then like Cheryl Miller, all the charisma in the world, and you could tell. They do those coach interviews. Cheryl Reeve didn't want to be there. It was just like, it was like, do you realize where you at right now? I just wanted to tap her on the shoulder and be like, do you know what's happening right now? Maybe that's and just her personality. It could be. It Maybe could she's be. always just, as you mentioned, she might just be a curmudgeon. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty, there's plenty of coaches that are, That's and, fine. Yeah. There's plenty of coaches that are historically like that. And then, like, we have basically, almost because of the media stuff we do, uh, as, or not we, but like, as far as, um, like the people that that have the rights, like make them get out of that, right? Like that's the thing with the with the you know Popovich thing is like he's doing it to be funny, but he he's doing it to be mean and funny at the same time, depending on whatever mood he strikes or what, if he's with Craig Sager or not. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. So yeah, like I, I that just might be her personality, and you know it is what it is. But like it ain't doing her no favors when she's on these losing sides of these things. Um, and then that one video that came out on Twitter. Where like she was sat next to someone that she uh that she benched on a flight and then she switched seats with her wife. It's like, nah, man, own it, yeah. own it. Yeah. Um. And then Cheryl Miller was just like, it was just a demonstration of why we need Cheryl Miller back in the game. Um. You just, still being on? You still you banging the drum on this still? Okay. Absolutely. I thought you was joking. I thought it was jokes. You was you serious? So do you? Oh, do you that's, want her, that's do you what want that's what the Fever fans want. Do you and want I, her, I think I count myself amongst them at oh, this point. Oh Lord, do you want her? Like, do you want the throwback coach Cheryl Miller? Or do you want like what we got now? Oh, I want what we got now. Okay, I didn't want, I'm saying do you, do you, do you. Do you ever see them out in them, them fish she was wearing back then when she was coaching? Look, oh, look I, did, I didn't notice that. I didn't realize that was her in your background. She I'm can saying, do whatever do she wants. 
You want that? You want the suspenders in the in the, in the, in the joints? Bring it back. Run it. <laughs> run it up. Cheryl Miller, be you. You know. <laughs> Uh, just right, such dude. great personality, great energy. Had had, it was just like she implemented, like yo, have fun and like go out there and bust their ass because like they're on this team. Y'all want to be on it. Some of y'all took y'all names out the hat of this. Some of y'all should be on that team. Yeah. Some of y'all is like y'all might not ever get a chance to make that team, but go send them a message anyway. It yeah. just felt like, um, Team USA was uptight. Yep. They were approaching the game like they were trying to run an offense, and it just like their guards look atrocious. Like throughout like this game, like aside from Tarasi, is it me or do they look tired? Uh, I don't know about tired, but they were just they were just ineffective. Like and okay. it just and it felt like. We need to take the entire guard rotation from like the WNBA All Stars and swap it out, and then like, you know, w- w- it'll kind of be, you know, that uh, that excite- excitement it was like, you know, Jackie Young was in there just running around. Jewel Jackie Young was out there getting good. cooked. Yeah, Enrique was cooking her. Yeah, and it was just like, like, and the thing, and the thing about Jackie is she's strong as shit. That shit didn't matter at all. <laughs> 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 like, Jack, like. I, I I feel like when I watch Jackie Young, like is there some there's some I'm not doing it because they're both dark skin, but like there's some like Drew Holiday, Andre Iguodala, Jason Kidd, Kung Fu grip th- situation where like they you they finna lean on you and it's be a long ass night. That shit did not work. Enrique Ar- 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 was like, you can have that shit if you want to. I'm sh- I'm pulling from 25 every single time I get. And she was cooking her. Yeah. Um, Caitlin didn't have a great night shooting the ball. She's kind of no. in the middle of like a little slump, like w- with her three point shooting, and she's exhausted. Like she's she's been at it for a year straight. So I think she's I gonna, mean, uh, you I know, mean, enjoy this month off. I mean, she should have had an ass out there for the three point shooting contest according to David Dennis. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> because, but, Man, and not because God. she should do it, because her nonsensical fans on Twitter said that she needs to be out there for Team USA to to for exposure of the game, so she, therefore she needs to do everything. And I was like, so your argument isn't actually based in the fact it's now that like, all you, exposure matters. You're upset at her fans for what for that, some shit that she had she had no nothing to do with. This do you not feel like you're 12 years old with this kind of lot, line of logic? It's like nana nana boo boo. That's that's what it sounded like. It, it was one step away from that. It's crazy. It was crazy. It's like you, you're better than this. <laughs> you, you're you would think. This. You would think. I feel like I've just seen like this slow de- slide downhill with him, and it's just like, that, all right, man. And then, and then, you know, there were people after the All Star game or doing the All Star game when Enrique was going nuts. They were like, she's the one that actually got the snub, and I was like. No, she wasn't. She, she she didn't get snubbed because she put her name out. That's not right. a snub. Learn, you, learn. No, you, that's not what words mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what words she wasn't mean. Going either way, she, she, she said, "Fuck this shit." It was her decision to pull her name out. She could have been snubbed, but she didn't get snubbed because she said no to them first. She didn't get fired. She quit. Right. <laughs> She told them to go to hell. No, it's even no what you're what you're doing to try to push down Caitlin Clark. No, how about we talk about Enrique saying fuck y'all and I'm gonna give y'all thirty four. Right. <laughs> that's that's the that's the real shit. That's the cool. Take shit. this with you. Take this thirty four with you to Paris. Like, yes. <laughs> take let that shit life. burn. <laughs> Reevaluate your entire process. That alienates players like me. Like right. Yeah, man. Like, uh, I, I thought it was uh, like focus on the main thing. We knew they did not pick the best twelve, and regardless of if they, if they have like nine of the best twelve, they don't have the best twelve. And it, and this was apparent because one of the, one of the best twelve went fucking off to make sure that they, that one beat eight or nine. Yeah, that's the real thing you should point. On, you should make reference to. Yeah, like it. It was. Um... Quite an eventful game that I really enjoyed. I thought it was a strong night for the sport, and stuff like that will grow the game. Like yep. and it'll be like, you know, it's just a collection of of, of a lot of great talent. Like, uh, and, and it was like, you know, I don't like to root against Team USA. But I was I was rooting for the WNBA. It was just like they. I was rooting for him going into it. It was like send him a message, you know. And then Cheryl Reeves is standing right there. Nah, we ain't. We ain't, I, ain't I ain't rocking with Cheryl Reeves. I so. I ain't rooting against I ain't rooting against Asia Wilson. So, you know, I wasn't rooting for her team USA. I was I was watching. It's like because I like I like. I mean, it's it's you know it's 
Imagine Team USA in the men's side played against the the NBA All Stars. They'd be like, I'm not rooting for one side or the other. I'm just rooting. I'm just watching it and enjoying it. So, but yeah, like, but ultimately it came down to if I had to vote, if I had to root for him, I ain't, I ain't rooting against Adrian Wilson. <laughs> 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 oh, and it was crazy because like we we were this close to Team USA's men and women losing on the same day. I want to know how many times that would ever has ever happened. Maybe never. Maybe Officially, never. like in a like in a like in a live sanctioned game, probably yeah. never. Um. So Team USA had quite a weekend. Um. Facing South Sudan. Team, team USA men's. Team USA men. Yep facing South Sudan and coming away with a one point victory and a game today with Germany which they won by four. Look, I was cautiously optimistic with this team a couple weeks ago on one nature we talked about them. I, I did not have a ton of overconfidence with, with the squad. I think the obvious um you know, this is an old team. I think people got to be able to say it. And it's like, yeah, man, this is this is an old team. There's a lack of explosion, I think, in some, some cases. There's injuries that people are working through. Uh, LeBron has been excellent in, in most, like, you know, the down the stretch and all that. Curry doesn't seem to have it rolling. Uh, Halliburton's not getting any more burn. So, like, there there's a real kind of lack of – true playmaking i would say like there's a there's a there's some one-on-one stuff with Ant edwards where he can he can make something happen that's just phenomenal mm-hmm. uh lebron's gonna you know b- play the mid-range and stuff like that and i think ad has been like really good mb mm-hmm. not so much but he hasn't been terrible as bad as some people would say oh okay at what you- point do we hold these nba guys accountable for their lack of adjustment to the FIBA rules or international rules. Because, look, man, um, they on the ground too much. They're just on the ground too fucking much. I'm looking at you, Joel Embiid. You're on the ground too fucking much. And I understand you on the ground a lot in the NBA, but you get calls with that shit. No, man, you ain't getting these calls. Like, you got to you gotta stay on your two feet. And, like, at... I saw him have the uh the 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 block that led to the Anthony Edwards um uh uh you know break back up the floor single man break and I got I got to start wondering like is MB baking into the math these falls or like instead of you remember the uh the Bill Simmons like Kevin Garnett jumps on the knees yes is he taking is he baking into the math if I fall I don't, these aren't impacts on my knees is this he's strategic, like, just the way he's falling. I'll- not, not like the fall, I mean like, like the, to, he jumps and blocks a shot, can land like up and down on two feet in his side, I'm just going to fall instead because it just takes away one less uh, uh, impact. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, he just roll through it. Yeah. And it's like, bro, you're too big to be bumping. You, you're not doing any weight aisle hours to get your ass up for you fucking around and break your hip or something stupid. And he doesn't look like he's in uh, phenomenal shape right now. You can kind of see the way he's spending time with Bam and AD. It shouldn't matter. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I don't know if we're seeing his best, but, you know, um, I, 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 like this team needs Kevin Durant for sure, because yeah. he's like still the ultimate weapon in international play. Yep. As great as LeBron is, they're going to make him the flag bearer and all this stuff. The greatest Olympian to ever wear a uniform for Team USA is Kevin Durant. And I don't know who, need, who needs to hear that, but it's him. Yeah, but, like, he's also in a, but he's also in a fucking mood right now because he wasn't a Nike commercial. Who gives uh, a fuck? Go home then. Mm. I would right? say because like we don't need nobody like to to that don't want to you know slap the slap the floor, play some defense. I, I don't even mean it in that sense. I mean like, why are you being so moody over a fucking commercial? Do you get paid more for it? Yeah, it's. Do you want the recognition after the, after? The, okay, this, let's let's this go. Is, this is the burner let's, man. Let's like, go. We, we know he's he, we know he's through, wired different. Let's go through two thousand twenty two through now in his playoff runs. What is? What? Like, 2001, you were one of the greatest postseason runs I've ever seen. It absolutely was. And if his and his foot was a size 14 instead of 16, maybe they win the finals, right? But, like, it's been, it's been embarrassing what's happened to him in the playoffs ever since. 
in now he's in Phoenix. He went from being in New York City to Phoenix. I'm sorry, they're I'm, they're going to put Giannis, a guy that won an MVP and what has won two MVPs and won a Finals MVP in the last five years. They're going to put LeBron James, the at worst second best basketball player of all time, and they're going to put the guy that's going to be the future of the fucking league for the next twenty years um, or fifteen years on in the commercial. I'm sorry, your spot was taken. It happened. You're and uh, quite honestly. If Steph Curry was still with Nike, do you think that Durant would be would be ups, as upset? Because no, they would put Steph in there too. But he's in Under Armour. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I I don't. He want. He's he's still searching for his validation. Bro, and it's gonna be. And, it's and, it's so all, crazy. And, and there's nobody to look at except for the person in the mirror for how this worked out. I'm not. T- look, I don't take away anything from his uh from his two Finals MVPs. Everyone else does, and it bothers him. Look, it, I would say he takes it away. Like he was like, "All right, I gotta go." It wasn't good enough for him to stay where he was no, at. He was no, like, no, "I I'm gotta say go." For people that are listening and may not know my take on it, like I, he cooked in the he cooked in the, on those teams. He was the best player on those teams. I I don't I don't say his I don't say I'm not out here doing the fucking math on rings. And be like he has what he had instead of, he won two titles, but he really ultimately has zero point seven five rings. I ain't doing that shit. He won two rings. He was the best player on two finals teams. It is what it is. Everyone else is like that. And it's and, it, and it's bothering him to his mind. He's still searching for validation. And like, I'm sorry, bro. It's too late in the game to get that. You need to make peace with that and continue to try to figure out what you want to do with your career. Well, with your so career. you know, you, you know what it kind of is. Why I think he was like, yo, like I'm looking at it like he don't really have no NBA home right now. He's he's a superstar that he can't go home nowhere. So it's like he looks at Nike. He's like, hey man, even Nike don't got my back. Like, <laughs> like I thought Nike was like, you know, they made like 15 or 16 Durant shoes. He's like. You Damn. think Nike wanted him to go to Phoenix? Uh, you think I, Nike? I oh, no, no, no. Think about how how the shoe game has had has worked for most of Durant's career, as far as helping facilitate plays to for for players who go in. Now, I'm not talking about Nike. I'm talking about Adidas. I'm talking about um, also uh, Under Armour, right? Think of the games they played, right? Where it's like, we want you here, we want you here, we want you here. If you want to go here, cool, we'll support you, whatever else, right? Because of colorways of shoes, the market of the city, the connection uh, a city may or may not have to China, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Looking at you, Adidas. Um, (laughs) Like, the idea that he's going to leave from Brooklyn to go to Phoenix and put on some black and purple shoes, I can't... what was the, what was the, 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 oh, okay. You know why we locked out the Dre's records? Because he's writes about blunts, big screen TVs, and bitches. You out here writing about homosexuals and Vikings. I can't sell this shit to Capitol Records. <laughs> like, that's, that is, that's, a, that's the crux of this. Like, he keeps making these moves, and they keep getting worse and worse and worse for his biggest partner. And then, lo and behold, he's shocked that, like, this has happened. This is a you thing. You you like you talked about the whole thing. Like if this was uh you you mentioned this for a couple years now, it's, and it's gotten worse now that he's in Phoenix. If this were if this were the baseball uh Hall of Fame or whatever else, you had to go in on the bus and you got to put the baseball cap on. What fucking cap does he have on? He has nowhere to go home to. He's a okay. he's a he's like Moses Malone. He's like the only guy that's a top twenty all time NBA basketball player, and it's like a nomad. You don't he has all these great moments here, there, and everywhere in between. But you're not, but you can't point pinpoint like the peak of his greatness was here, and he 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 ran through most of his career. He's iconic in these moments. He might have iconic moments. He might have iconic memories or whatever else. I'm not taking that from him. He's absolutely one of the fifteen greatest basketball players all time. But like you point out all this stuff, and it's like. Where is it? And ultimately, is it a place? It, it, the further we get away from OKC, the worse it is. And this is a part of the Nike thing. It's like, bro, you have keep you keep cutting and diluting our ability to sell you as a as a product and as a aspirational figure that people want to buy it, your buy your shoes, buy your gear, your merchandise, your apparel. I'm sorry, get out the way. We got this. We got this alien logo for for Wimayama. He's on the thing. Sorry. Move around, right? right. You know the, the theme of the show continues. Move around, you know. Um, but I, I, I'm back to you know Team USA like it, itself. These games are way too close. I don't give yeah. a fuck. You know, yeah. everybody's saying the rest of the world has gotten better. Have we not gotten better? Like, it, like you know, all I hear is just how this is the greatest era. This is like all the greatest players are playing now. This is all this stuff like 
you know, they have so much more skill, you know, and everything like that. But it's like, why are these games, you well, know, single possession games well, in the fourth I, quarter? What well, are we doing? I'd argue that it's also what you see in the NBA. Uh, Shea Gilgers, Alexander, Luka Doncic, uh, Jokic, like the best players in the NBA. Half of you say, who are your top 10 players on an everyday basis in the NBA? Half of them are not American, right? I mean, NBA's on Team USA, so sure, whatever. Um, but, but like, let, like, when and Gabriel give them work, James? Like, <laughs> I understand. I, I think, I think honestly, like, the rest of the world has caught up, and then you know, the guys that we are looking at are going to be starters and the key players or whatever else. A lot of them are old as dirt by in by regular historical standards of, of NBA pro basketball, they're old as dirt. It doesn't, I understand LeBron is still an all NBA player. I understand Kevin Durant is still an all NBA player. I still understand that Steph is still an all NBA player. Drew Holiday's up there. These people are old. I understand like guys can play far into their career, but like ultimately they're still old and the young, and there's, you know, there's youth everywhere now. And the guys are more competent than they were and were, and aren't also looking at these guys like they're, like they're gods, right? They're not like, I don't know if South Sudan after losing to them, by was it three points, four points? One point. Losing them by one point after that was out here walking up to him and asking him for autographs. I don't think that happened. Bro, that shit's gonna get made into a movie. Like the South Sudan story. They're gonna be rocky years they're ago. Rocky. They went to this with the champs. Thirteen years sure. ago the, the the nation come comes and, and our big import uh, or export, Luol Dane comes home to build this program to scout talent, and then they go through and prepare and take their lumps for, for only thirteen years or whatever. And then they meet the team the they meet Team USA led by LeBron James, and then they were this close. No, to no, winning, no. James. you also got to point. You also got to point out the connection of LeBron James, Luol Deng, in high Luol school. Dang. How, how they were number one and number yes. two players in their high school classes. Yep, yep. You take it back. In a high school I, class I in two thousand three. Well, I know yeah. him. And then, bro, they missed a putback dunk, or they would have won. Yep. Like, they went the distance with the champ. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a movie. Yep. Like, watch. I guarantee it. Yeah. But then the Germany game. It wasn't even like like so. Germany's like a team we're gonna have to see. Germany beat us obviously in the FIBA stuff last time and they were up by five in the middle of the third quarter or at the end of the third quarter comfortable like and yeah. you know a couple couple uh bounces of the ball the other way we're, we're sitting on here opening with this show with the collapse of Team USA losing it and shit like that <coughs> but there's the Jerry to my lead ass in Paris <laughs> bro rocks at him I had the rocks ready I was like look well, don't, don't, don't try to come over hey, here. Ain't nothing convince me you ever throwing some rocks at Steph Curry. You can stop that shit now. Stop the cap. Stop hey, the Steph, cap. But, hey, Steph, get out the way. Let me aim for this nigga. <laughs> Steph, get out the way. Move around. <laughs> let, me, let me aim for the rest of these niggas. Like. But, um, you know, aim for Steve Kerr. Apparently... He doesn't know he has a he has a person who led the league in assists who doesn't he doesn't even play in, in the games apparently. Oh uh, yeah, I, I can't I couldn't miss Derek White's head if, oh, if I was throwing <laughs> throwing that throwing one of the rocks. Um, but Germany was just like yeah they could have won. It was Franz Wagner and Schroeder and uh, I think I don't think. Mo Wagner was on there, but they had guys that were they were like, yeah, oh, he's a Euro League MVP and yep. he shoots forty percent. He's a five time All Star over there. He's a two time MVP, and it's just like, all right, so he's he's matched up with Anthony Davis, like bust his ass, like I don't <laughs> I don't give a fuck, like, <laughs> so, but it's just way too close. It's like. I don't know, bro. It's, it's, it's weird. We needed more athleticism. We needed more yeah. youth on this team. Yeah. And I believe that more than ever now. This is not going to be a cakewalk. This is not going to be a laydown um, for for all these. If they want to win, they're going to have to earn it. Like, yeah. And- I mean, to be fair, 20, 2021 – because of the pandemic, twenty twenty one, it was a close. It was close like that too. Like all they the- lost to Nigeria in the. In the um, and the uh, Nigerian basketball legend Gabe Vincent. Right. You know, right. that was to point out, like, you know, they won gold last Olympics, but like that wasn't no cakewalk like in the traditional, you know, sense either. So, um, you know, I, I honestly think just the, you know, the world has gotten more competent. And even though all these dudes ain't in the NBA, like the Euro ball thing is real. 
And they're ahead of us as far as developing talent in like seeing the game. They're just ahead of us. Like we talked about this earlier about like how or a few weeks ago, maybe about like how, you know, all of the innovation offensively is is happening over in Europe. And then like the NBA takes it takes pieces of it and then it trickles downward as opposed to everything else like football, where it is from the grassroots up as far as innovation. It's backwards. Like your high school call your high school basketball coach or whatever else ain't no shit. Yeah. Sorry. You might love him. He ain't no shit. And he and he and he was out here running the same shit it was running um at that same school or uh, at other schools in the eighties. Seamus Noah, Michael B. Jordan as Luol Deng gonna have a generational performance. Oh my god. <laughs> That's foolish. I <laughs> <laughs> be stupid <laughs> don't let that fool you so uh he probably said in the nba they're gunning for nail polish sponsorships jared mccain is cold do not let it fool you that is a gimmick that young brother is cold i don't you know what's what's funny about that is like people ain't learning less from odell beckham jr whereas like just because you the dance dude or whatever don't mean he'll he won't bust your ass in his particular sport like that don't 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 feel like don't feel like you are uh what do you you got you you got more testosterone running through your veins in him because of because of how he gets down off off the court off the field he will bust your ass y'all got to and then like that should be the part where like you see him bust people's ass and he's do dancing that should make you be more focused you don't want to be in, on the next person on the summer jam screen get embarrassed he even like embarrassed that, people and like they ain't that, gonna like it they're gonna, be, they're gonna be real sad they're gonna be picking up they're gonna be starting fights because he's embarrassing because they, they let their guard down look and like, i don't get, i don't get the vibe casting them with, with the not with with the goofy shit that's I what don't he's get, doing i don't get the vibe this is some soft player either no, like he so just dances. it's <laughs> yeah. generational man generational the kids yeah. dance now it's fine um yeah kobe did talk about um not really liking aau and it not really helping players but you know he said that a while ago it, he was like almost too ahead of the curve people were just kind of like oh whatever you know and then all of a sudden <laughs> the, the chickens start coming home to roost so um I, i'm hopeful that we win i'm cheering for for both uh usa teams uh the women i think have less like a a, a issue uh will, oh they will, yeah they will have less of an issue bringing home the gold team usa um, women's don't ever they don't yeah. ever disappoint <laughs> yeah. they don't ever disappoint <laughs> so I, I i feel like asia wasn't gonna gonna you know go all world out there like the real thing is like team the real thing is like uh the team WNBA team is like that should be the gold medal game because they will fucking they will fucking want a gold medal if not for if not for you know Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson being on the same team and shit like that. So like don't get it fucked up. Like the women are the women are always been the more dominant team compared uh, comparatively speaking to or relatively speaking to uh the men's uh basketball side. Yeah, so um I I'm hoping Steve Kerr uh you know packs a lunch and um you know, let's but, uh, you know, I think, you know, there's a I, I feel like obviously this whole thing is a Nike production. This is a clutch sports production. Like there is a documentary being made. Um, there's all this stuff like, you know, so don't fuck the documentary up. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but we know you're going to put it out in five years. I'm like, yeah, you know, this is the last time LeBron ever going to win shit. So, you know, last time Curry ever going to win shit. <laughs> Last time Kerr ever going to win shit. Like, it, it, the last, you know, this is the real last dance right here, James. Bro, the, the, when I saw that Steph was a person that, like, that that uh, uh, did the announcement from LeBron winning uh, or, or giving the flag break. I know Durant was furious. <laughs> furious. <laughs> Especially you, give you, me, you gonna do this in front of me? Especially after all the stuff or whatever. He's like, you mean to tell me this motherfucker won, uh, what, three gold medals or three medals? He won three, no, yeah, three medals. I won four gold medals. What the fuck? But it's like, like Steph doing it right. I'm like Steph. I'm like, bro. You know, I was thinking of like how you know people talk about the whole Drake thing. Yeah, people. I, t- I think I did voice message. You like people do the when they just see them as completely biased in in favor of Drake against Kendrick Lamar and this whole thing, and they do the OVO. You know, somebody's OVO, whatever their name, OVO Steph. Yeah. For, for example, this situation, it'd be like or or, or Lover Boy Steph. Like we gotta find a name that for clutch slash it was Bron like propaganda machine or whatever else. So he's like, oh, you want him? Steph on the payroll now. And I was like, Draymond. It took Draymond a decade, but he finally wore him down. <laughs> Cause I was 
was watching that shit. I was like, I know Rich watching this kind of like, man, it's bullshit. They got stuff out here putting bigging up this nigga LeBron. I know, yeah, I know Rich hated like that it. shit. I don't, I don't like it. I, I gotta say, I don't like it. I'm like, this Steph time. You know, Steph ain't never got a gold or whatever. Like, this supposed to be Steph's team, but no. No, this, I thought this, he was on. This, I thought he was on the 2012 team. No. You want um, You want the 16 team? No. He didn't go. All the other guys went. Durant, okay. Clay, Draymond went, but he didn't okay. go. Okay. Fucking, I, but you know, LeBron James got got to save Team USA. You know, he he's making the calls to make sure all the players will come. And bro, the deference that all these players still like bow down to him with. I'm like, this nigga's forty. Like, when the fuck are one of y'all gonna step up? Like, and be like, I'm the fucking man. You now. know what it reminds me of? What? 2008 with Kobe. Nah, yeah, nah, because nah, Kobe was still that dude. Like, I don't, no, 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 I don't, not one of the ten. No, 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 there's an elite. No, 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 no. I mean, you, would you rather have in a game for your life, Jason Tatum or LeBron James? Right now, man, I don't know. Okay, then you, that, yeah, that, that, I, I, don't, I don't know means you know <laughs> you fucking know yeah, you don't want to say it. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> anyway, I, look, so I just don't want to be advocating for Jason Tatum out here either. So. so, it, so it ain't, well, what I'm saying is, it he ain't got to be one of the ten best players in the world. He got got to be one of the. It, but he's clearly inside that top five for for Team USA because that's where Team USA is. Like the talent in the NBA is international, or the top half of the top ten is international now. So, um, this is the thing. Like, like what, what I meant by that, I didn't mean necessarily that he's still that guy. Or he's still the best player, arguably still the, or MVP candidate. I'm saying it's like he's still playing at an all NBA level. And they so do you and mean like Kobe in, in twelve? That, sorry, you mean like Kobe in twenty twelve? Then no, because twenty eight was oh eight was like literally like when like Kobe had to go out there at some points and just hit, hit game winners or or have game enders. Yeah, was that two thousand eight or twelve when he was hitting the game enders? I thought it was uh, two thousand eight is when they had that he he went nuts against Spain. Right, so that's two thousand eight. It's ba- like these games look like all right, the king, whatever's. Shit's going off schedule. Shit's not happening the way it's supposed to happen. But like, there's one guy that's like, "Look, man, I've won championships, and and, I, and I'm waiting for Steph to have. The, I'm waiting for Steph and LeBron to both go off and do this at the same time, or or Steph to have his turn doing this." But it's like, so far, is this been LeBron doing the whole like, "Hey, man, I ain't fucking losing." Like, I got some gas in my tank because I haven't, I, you know, because I haven't like had to play in large minutes or whatever else, so I can go out here. No, no, I, I don't mean deep. because well, he got. No, I, I mean like because he's not playing like, you know, when you see peak LeBron, he's like. How how LeBron gonna do? He gonna have to play forty minutes. He gonna play the whole entire second half in a playoff game, and he may win or may lose depending on how close he get the game. I mean, like he's not because it's all it's Team USA. He plays his particular sets of minutes, and then at the end of the game, if it's close, he can just tap in, right? Um, that's what I meant. But I, but yeah, he also does have some extra gas to take because he ain't had to play for months. That also is the yeah. case too. Yeah, you yeah. Know, ain't, ain't no deep playoff runs no. going on right now. No. So he got himself a hot four. Yeah. You know, ready. Yeah. You know, well, well, well prepped, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, um, they better not lose. <laughs> look, look, I said all that to say this. They better not lose. Hey, I got to get up to Seamus Nova on here. He said KD going to hop on his burner and tweet the gentle activity to Steph. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Look, look, cl- clutch don't, look, clutch of, look, clutch of, look, clutch of, look, them SUVs are fine. At, like, that SUV shit, I didn't even know about that until it looked like. Them black SUVs, they'll, they'll, they'll find that burner. Yeah. The black SUVs, look, Steph inside that black SUV voluntarily at this point look, now. I already see what this is, James. This is all these niggas getting their story right to fight for their generation. Like, they be like, I was this good. I'm put, I'm gonna put you over. You gonna tell them how good I was. They ain't gonna say, I was sorry to lift you up. Oh! Like, that All was that's hap- going on right Rich, now. That was happening back. Remember, uh, 2022. I think st- one of them from the Warriors got married. It might have been Iguodala or Draymond got married after they won the title, and LeBron was at the wedding, and they all took that picture and they all put up four fingers. Yeah, that was that was the beginning of them turning of Steph and LeBron turning to Magic and Bird. That was the beginning of it right then. It was like, nah, we about to be together. You yep. know, it, like, we we going to have this unified front. Like. Right. 
And it's been going on for two years now. And then, like, think about it. They both riding yeah, like, you don't come to my team, or you don't come to my team. And they both are like, nah, we ain't going to be on our teams. We just going to stay on our teams because we ain't going to because we going to end it how it's going to end. And we both can have four. It's going to be how it is. And I think that's another reason when you talked about the uh, LeBron. I bet Katie was burning up when Steph did that thing. I bet it's a big part of it is like when they did that picture with the floor, that shit had to sting. That shit had to sting. Yeah. Because he only like, got, he only because if, if he was in the picture, I don't know, I don't think he was in pictures, but most he can do is throw up too. Yeah, and you know they got to fight off all these, you know they got to fight off Jokic, you got to fight off Women Yama, you got to fight off, uh, you know Luka, you got to yep. fight off Giannis, so yep. like, all that shit. So it's uh so there's a lot, man, going on here. So a lot of subplots, nastiness that 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 is setting up for yeah. you know, future shit. It's, yeah. There's I always agree. agendas at play. Always agendas at play. Um, so a couple weeks ago, we talked about Bobby Lash. Or no, we talked about MVP. Uh, In regards you know, to Bobby Lash, yeah. Yeah, with, with, with that with the Hurt Business and, you know, the Triple H's WWE. And um, look, some of that stuff bubbled up again yesterday in full force. Um, my man uh, King AO sent a tweet out uh, that basically was like, hey, man, what what wrestlers are, are, are really like, Showing that they're being booked in a better position right now. Uh, what black wrestlers? Let, let, let me not leave that out. Mm-hmm. Um, then we get like a uh, that that tweet sends everybody insane, um, and, and it gets people to work on a legitimate activity. Um, <laughs> so they um, had new, news break of Bobby Lashley's deal was coming up. He's not gonna uh, stick around. You know, a lot of people were. Oh, like, it's already official. Huh. You're not resigning. Yeah, everybody's like, we know which way the wind is blowing on this. Okay, and, I, I didn't know if it was already for certain that people already know, like, he's out the door. I thought, or maybe it was one of those situations where, like, you know, it's the, he's reached free agency. Let's see where he goes. Oh, he's going back to WWE. Another one for WWE. More yeah, yeah, yeah activity. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if, if that's the case or whatever, okay. but MVP is definitely not coming back. Like, he tweeted the yeah. salute thing, like, I'm out of here pretty much. And I think the day that he turns his mic on, wherever it is, it's not going to be talking to Jericho, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> Wherever he turns his mic on is going to be he's going to be unloading the chopper. Um, I think that the silence around this and the the finger pointing and the look the other way while and pretend you don't see what you're seeing that's going on with this is nasty. And it is a true it, look. It is a true reflection of things where I said. Yeah, man. This, don't forget, this guy's teacher for 25 years was Vince McMahon. Um, and I think if you if you talk about the last 10 years, right, like you got to ask a question. Who is booking black wrestlers better, Vince McMahon or Triple H? OK, so you got New Day. Uh, you got Bobby Lashley. Um, got Street Profits, got Bianca Belair. And, and then for Triple H, you got a bunch of North American champions. Industry profits as well. So, yeah. Hey, you got Carmelo Hayes. Um, yeah, I mean, well, to Carmelo Hayes, that Carmelo more Hayes is really a Shawn Michaels era run of yeah. NXT, so you can't really give him that. That'd be like trending him for, like, Ilya Dragunov. Like, no, I can't do that. Look, I mean, you can for his, you know, NXT UK thing, but not, not, no. You know, it's, you know, he had the current AW World Champion, you know, in his at his disposal. Uh, Triple H did, did, never really, you know, went all the way with him. Um, I mean, to be <laughs> fair, in that situation, they pulled up Death Row way too early. Not Death Row, but Hit Row way too early. Um, and then Vince. As we just talked about, had a, who had a better track record of pushing black records? Say, uh, black wrestlers decided he's going to push top dollar instead of Swerve Strickland. All right. Yeah. It's amazing neither one with the company anymore. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, what a what, what a disastrous idea. Um. So you know this whole thing with Lashley, right? And I think Lashley, you know. Throughout some of the pandemic, we see him on these pay per view shows. Hard worker, yep. just kept getting gradually more over, yep. you know, on his own or whatever. And then 
all of a sudden this guy is like having getting yanked off of WrestleManias and he has to make an entrance with the Andre the Giant, you know, trophy and shit. He's mm-hmm. getting left off SummerSlams. He's just not getting booked anymore. Uh, everybody's waiting for the great Montez Ford push. And I'm like, they've been waiting for over a year now. They've been waiting for three years for this, James. <laughs> well, I mean, when they really started, you know, he's probably put on, he's putting on weight. That was, that was like two years ago. Yo. Yeah. All right. You remember the, um, the uh, Roman Reigns, Sami Zayn match. Yeah. And uh, Montreal, yeah. like Montez Ford was in that as a singles wrestler with yeah. all that, that mass, that muscle yeah. and all that stuff. Um, they, you know, so that was over I, a year and a half ago. Yeah. I think I watched um, a match on Monday Night Raw around that time. It was Austin Theory versus Montez Ford. And I was like, this company's pushing which one of them? Like, and then I was like, huh, I wonder why. And then, like, that whole thing with they tried to turn these guys heel. Obviously, people love those guys. They don't want to boo them, and they don't want to boo Lashley. And they rejected that whole thing. And it's been, you know, they've been the victim of what, you know, just just group all, all the black folks together, group up all the Latinos together, yep. and, and, and don't now, give them much more than that. we're apparently grouping up all the lesbians. The stud line, as I've heard, uh, they, they've been called. Uh, you know, that by, was by me and you that tweeted that. Yes. Yes. And then, and then, look. Uh, also, t- the USA Network retweeted laughing. Yeah, they, uh, they, they in the background. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. Right, yeah. right next to uh, Kamala Harris. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the it, combine that with the fried chicken, you know, during the selling the match, selling the Modelo, and like, yo, man, if if Sorry. Triple H. Sorry, it's Rich. Not gotta risk. Your point. Look, got to got to got to prop comic. God damn it. Got to, God still damn got it. the Modelo's next to me. <laughs> if Triple H <laughs> is not racist, right? Let's just say let's just say all right, he's not. It doesn't matter if he is or isn't. The product is the product of the TV shows and the TV shows and presentations and presentations. It's hard to run away from all the the, the television. It's hard to run away from all the 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 people that are being booked. Let's take a look at this SummerSlam card. No, uh, well, well, uh, okay, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, my bad. Oh no, 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 no go ahead, make okay. your point. I'm, my, I'm, my, I'm gonna pull the card. Okay, because my point is like when people do the is so and so a race, like that is it, that for the, for what we're talking about isn't is what makes people tune out and then they go into their holes and defensive over and, and cope. Yeah, yeah, like whether or not let's whether or not someone's a racist. The allegations of racism. Let's put that in the neat box and let's put it to the side for now. We'll, that box is still there. We'll get to it in a second. But right now, that box over here. We just talked about they group up all the wrestlers based off of how they look and where they're from and the languages they speak. And then, based off of that, we put product placement in their matches in the uh, in the on the screens behind them that match stereotypes of of whatever uh, identity they belong to. That's problematic. Now, pick up the box, Rich. In your background, ain't that a no? You got Triple H in blackface. I do. Okay, as as a matter of fact. <laughs> okay. So whether or not you want to talk about whether or not Triple H is racist or not. Let's focus on the part where there are problematic things happening on screen right now. That's more that's more important right now than whether or not he's a, he's the he's the you know the dreaded R word. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm looking at this SummerSlam card. It looks like there's seven matches locked in. I can't guarantee there's going to be any more added because you know you already know the joke on that. So let's go through. Any chance we got- they cut down on them? You never know. It might be just, you know, it's just, 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 well, just, seven, just, they, uh, it's just too many. You know, we that's can't, we can't like they ain't never happened to people at a WrestleMania. Remember WrestleMania twenty eight when they cut that uh, that mixed tag match? Yep. Remember when they just just let Roman Reigns and uh, Daniel Bryan off SummerSlam or two thousand nineteen or some shit like that? Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's go through this card. Stop me when we we get um someone that is of the diaspora. So we got Damian Priest versus Gunther. Definitely not. Well, Far from it with Gunther. Like I <laughs> Okay, so Damian Priest, he 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 there might be there might be some diaspora there, Puerto Rican. We'll, yeah, we'll let's put that let's put we'll put, he got 
out. All right, we'll put a half star on it. I guess whatever. I don't even want to really do this. But yeah, sure. We'll 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 mention the point that like yes, there are a lot of Afro Latinos in Puerto Rico, and we'll move them there. I'm not finna get into ancestry DNA with him right now, but let's put that to the side for now. Yeah. You got Bailey versus Nia Jax, and their feud is over Bailey's butt. And that Nia Jax is a is a stiff, reckless worker. Yeah. Even though the point of wrestling is to beat people up. We got Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. A true opportunity for Liv Morgan to win. That aside, this is a little Anglo to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we got Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokoa. So is this at a point where we acknowledge that like the pro the WWE fans love to do the stupid Cody Rhodes joke? Like, what do you what do you mean this problem? Like, they're, 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 don't get the fuck out of here, man. Childish. All right, go ahead. We got Logan Paul versus L.A. Knight. Sorry, Tan and Biz don't count. I I, I I mean, does it count if we got one person that is The Rock doing a rock impersonation? He comes out to that white G-Funk, you know. <laughs> I forgot about this. <laughs> it's like, hey, y'all, hey, you, hey, you like that riddle thing that we used to do? How about we make it worse? <laughs> <laughs> we got Sami Zayn versus Braun Breaker. I'm sorry, Braun, no, Braun no, Braun Breaker's not. He's not Dominican. Now, no. my, now, here's my thing, right? If you were, what? How old were you when you thought Macho Man was black? I was probably like a six year old. Six year old. So you mean to tell me there ain't no kid that was born in two thousand eight that don't look at prom breaker and see that see that Caesar and think that's a nigga? Are you kidding me? There's no, there's no way that they man out here thinking Braun Breaker. Yeah, LeBron Breaker. LeBron. Exactly, yeah. yeah, that's what he named after right there. Reckensteiner. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Um, so we, then we got Sa- uh, Sami Zayn, as I mentioned, f- far, far from, from you know. Uh, and then the last one, CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre. I, I mean, you said you said Sami Zayn, right? Yeah. I mean, he got the red hair. I mean, that could be that could be that could be Blake Griffin. That could be Malcolm X. That could be- <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on, man. So what's what you had next on the on the lineup? CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. No. No, I ain't got got no jokes in that one. No, let's move on. I'm not feeling the, the, you know, (laughs) you know. I'm just saying, you know, let's look at the upcoming card, and it's like, oh, you know, no Bianca, no Jade, no no, Street Profits. Let's let's just, let's just, you know, no. Where was that? Where was where was Lashley supposed to fit in? You know. I don't know, you know, maybe you have Lashley get his, or uh, never mind. Uh, you, you know, Lashley and Drew McIntyre have had a history over the years. Maybe they do that eventually whenever they go, cool down off. Of, I mean, who knows? I don't know how much how much longer do you think Bobby Lashley has on his contract? Not sure. Do you think he goes out through the rest of the year? That would be a long time for this news to break. That's I feel true. like it's like inside of two months. Right. Okay. Okay. Um. But yeah, man, it's um. They're, the people are very, being very defensive about these these things, like well, you know, w- w- questioning Triple H and stuff like that. And of course, he's not. Well, you you know, know, let just completely absolving him of it, of this. It's, it's you know, it's it's this thing where like, if you like the Booker, the Booker's infallible. It's like, nah, man. Tony Khan makes mistakes. Triple H makes mistakes. This man made mistakes. Rossi Ogawa made mistakes. Gato made mistakes. That's this. That's this thing. This is really fucking hard to do. So like, so instead of pretending just because you like what they're doing at a particular time, like there, there's no you, problem. It's okay, or... it's okay to detach your identity from the wrestling you watch. And we, oh, I felt like we had this conversation once a month. <laughs> detach yourself from the. Uh, detach your identity from the wrestling you really enjoy. It's okay. Like, you know, the other day we were, or last week we were talking about like uh, me being a comic book nerd, or whatever else. Like, I don't identify with, with Stanley and Marvel. I don't. I don't. I, why would I? I don't. I don't identify with Jack Kirby in in the in the fourth world in DC. I don't. I like the stuff. I mean, I, I identify with it. no. Keep keep applying pressure too. Like yeah. and like, there's uh, you know, there's 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 people that 
go to bat publicly for things, some things, not so much on the others. And then it's like, I think it's fair to ask people these questions. Well, where are you at on this? Like, even if they don't want to answer it, document it. Be like, all right, yep. I really, I really ain't got nothing to say about it. All right, yep. cool. We'll, we'll keep that in mind. Like, yep. you know, and um, that's the point. That's the point of good media and good journalism. Yeah. Because it's like and good content. Like, let people <laughs> see, like, what people have to say about this stuff. Yeah. And, and it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, of course, uh, you know, and then you almost even got to take it back to how Vince pushed Lashley. It's almost like Bobby Lashley fits the Vince McMahon stereotype, the black superhero like th- that he's he's made for Vince McMahon to push him. So who even knows if he was like being pushed in a way that didn't serve an agenda? Like, see, these are the these are the yeah, yeah because I mean, because yeah, about it's, racism. It's, 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 remember that Sheldon Benjamin commercial? Yeah, like that, look, that's, that was a that was definitely an agenda. Look, remember the thing about the sex toys with Vince McMahon naming them after the wrestlers, and yeah. especially the black ones. Yeah, you telling me he ain't have a Lashley running around? I don't have it confirmed either way. I'm just asking the question, Rich. You know my mind works like would I turn words into visuals, and that was that that will haunt me for the rest of my life now. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Like you, it's, that... I'm just saying, man. Like it's um, these are all the, Look, these are all the things that we have to reexamine. I feel like it's like all right, like either you're just gonna be shunted to the side under Triple H, I, or I, you're gonna be pushed as Vince Man as some fetish object, possibly. Right. Yeah. Can we? Can we? Do we got anything else to say? Because now I'm trying to like move on. Because I'm trying to get the like the AI image of this man holding up a comically large black sex toy in his hand now. <laughs> and I just, I just can't. I can't. I can't. It, it won't. It's burned into my retinas now. Don't none of y'all type this in the AI. Oh, I, I do not want nothing popping up in the Discord. <laughs> um. Yeah, man. So, um. What we got next, man? Uh, I guess we should talk about uh, Dynamite 250. Um, yeah, what a show, kind of. <laughs> um, so, I think like, I think it mostly comes down to like what you thought of the opening match. Yeah, yeah, we should we should start there where they did. So like the first sixty minutes of the show, dedicated to Will Ospreay and MJF, and um, I didn't love this match. Uh, I thought there was so much in it, like, cause I, I like me and James were watching it in real real time, mm-hmm. um, talking about it, and you know I was kind of like saying some of the things I, I wasn't like digging necessarily about the match. You felt like they were and, padding time from my from my from my vantage point. It felt like you thought they were padding time just to go just to get to sixty, and I, I don't I, disagree with you. Like I thought, I thought there was that, but I thought they were passing the peak almost over and over again mm. they were doing things like like i felt like, like do you think it was like roller coaster that, like it was it, this the peak goes down and they get a higher peak go down higher they kept finding higher peaks so you felt like nah they should have cut it off at a certain point i feel like we didn't need to go anything past 35 if you wanted to open it with a 35 I mean, minute match there i i thought yeah. that would have been I thought that would have been perfect for them and then they just kept going and i was like we've seen everything like that's why i was like i was like all right there's like I started thinking about all the other wrestlers on the show, right? Mm-hmm. I started thinking about who pushed for this match to be 60 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, and then, like, you know, I heard some <laughs> some stuff, and I was like, yeah, I I, I really don't feel, you know, it, my, my initial, co- you know, thought on this was like, all right, if we're blocking an hour off, there are a lot of people that are not going to get booked this week or not have a chance to, like, push things forward this week. Mm-hmm. And with... Uh, MJF and Osprey. Physically, I will not take away from what they did as far as the athleticism it took, and you know some of the stuff they did was just flat incredible. Mm-hmm. But there were there were huge psychology gaps in, in, in a lot of this stuff, and then there was like, um, I felt like it just, I felt like they were trying on the clothes, like there was like a checklist that they were going around on, and it was like this MJF apology tour where it's like, yeah. I need to try to have my match of the year candidate or whatever with Will Ospreay. Mm-hmm. Like, and it, it just felt rather unnatural. 
Like, and, you know, you, you think of ROP, B, P, uh, excuse me, you think of ROPW, right? And it's just like, you think of uh, Sugar Rush, like, you know, fast paced flips, stuff like that. But, like, mm-hmm. the key to that, why I like that stuff is like seeing it timed up correctly, seeing it uh, peaking with the crowd, seeing like the crowd like get to this point and then just like explode like that. And they know kind of like, damn, we, we, we took we took a journey, but it was just like. For me, it just like didn't feel organic enough, mm-hmm. and it was like a. Um, I, I thought it was like a lot of stuff they were doing would ultimately mean nothing minutes later, and then all yeah. of it to boil down to the MJF ring finish. Yep, I was damn near insulted when when by yep. the time the uh, uh, the match finished, I docked it because of the finish. But I also docked the uh, the Iron Man match he had with Danielson or MJF had with Danielson uh, when that happened too, because like. Enough with the fucking ring and finding an easy way out. Like, I understand. Look, I get it. You're a hill, but Jesus Christ, if you're going to do that, go half the time. Well, not an Iron Man match because they had to go an hour, but you get my point. Like, you don't go to overtime after going an hour and then give me a fuck finish and get out of it. I, I, I was befuddled when people were like, yo, this is the greatest match in AEW Dynamite history. No, Dave Meltzer no. gives it 5.75 stars, and I'm like, I, huh? I, like, I, 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 remember, I, I remember I told you Meltzer was going to go up for it. I thought he was going to give it five and a half. Because, you Bro, know, give was, him Meltzer over five standards, I thought he was going to give five and a half. I didn't know he was going to go that high, but... Yeah, like, I was like, I thought Danielson and, and Hangman, hey, that 60-minute match they did, smoked this. And that, it felt like the time went by, um, you know, by that time, like, it, it felt natural. It felt like, ultimately, you were going up a roller coaster, and it just peaked at the end or whatever. This one was just like, yo, we could have done a finish. Why the fuck did they brawl for three minutes out there? Why the fuck did he beat up his legs, you know, for... X amount of time, and then Osprey just starts doing the Kawada kicks and shit like that. Like in in my book, I actually like that Osprey said, "Fuck that leg work." I'm I'm fucking we ball. Like like that works I, as a positive for I, me. I, Most I people would because, consider that a negative. I didn't because he sells. They do that leg damage for forever. Then he goes up and does all the arm stuff or does all the all the stuff he does in a match, and it's like okay. He shook that off, whatever, over the extent. He recovered because MJF never went back to his leg, and there was another opportunity for MJF to go back to his leg. Fine, he was able to recover, whatever. And, like, he didn't... He, my problem was, is his right knee that's the problem, and the MJF kept forgetting which leg was the right leg to work on. <laughs> over and over, as far as his, as his attempts on pain. And then after that, then they got him and started wrestling. Okay, he's recovered, that's fine. But then at, then later, when they started working on Osprey's shoulder, and Osprey's shoulder work is... It's actually the incredible selling part in the the in the thought that went into the counters and how you had to do the the hand that one arm handspring and all that kind of stuff. I was like, so why do you do this so shitty and then you're gonna go to this and do it better? Just do the shoulder better because obviously it's really hard to see somebody as explosive as Osprey have to be off kilt off tilt for a certain amount of time selling eight legs and they have to go right into doing all the shit. So that was my problem with it. And then the thing that I saw, people were complaining that I saw they hated this match. They hated the shoulder work. I was like, no, mention the leg stuff. The leg stuff was the part that was shitty, not the not the shoulder part. You missing commercial break that he got his shoulder popped back in the socket. He's good then. When people hit their shit popped out in the socket and they continue to play football all the time. That's a mm-hmm. thing. Right? So that wasn't my problem. And then, then there's the 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 Will Osprey crisis of uh faith, like that, doing that's what the, that's the a part of the driver thing. That's the reason that's a big I docked it more for that than I did for the ring. Because it, it all played together where it's like, I don't know if I can still hit this move. And it's like, bro, you can't, you have to save that melodrama for the next time you get a shot at the title because that will cost you the title. You're not going to be, you can't continue to be a dumbass in every big high profile match when it comes to this Tiger driver. You just well, lost the title because of it. And then he does it, I'm docking it. Then the ring came out, oh, I'm definitely docking this. So I had well, this at five up until that, until until the melodrama and then the fuck finish at the end. I gave it four and, four and three quarters. The thing with his Tiger driver thing, and I think a lot of people are not thinking about this, this is his out to lose these matches like this is almost like and when i he already was in, hate it that's my point and, 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 and if it wasn't this it would be something else like right. as far as like whatever to, it and is when you're going to lose because you get hit in the face with a ring you don't need a you don't need two outs you only need one and then um you think about the guy that he got spooked from doing this like somebody needs to walk will osprey up to brian Danielson and be like he's okay he, it's fine. He's he main won event a thing. tournament. And he's going to the main event. 
He's main eventing Wembley Stadium in, in like next month. It's fine, Will. It's okay. You can use the move. You know that's why um, it. That's why it did it. Look, it was. It had its. It had the point of being useful up until the Swerve match, and then he should have never done it again because Danielson was going to Danielson. We've seen that Danielson is now. He's not in a wheelchair. Drew right. out of his, drew out of his mouth. Like if they were gonna roll Brian Danielson around, treat him like a cripple, and be like, "Yo, this is really they need." They didn't sell it. If they make him a, t- if they had made him a tag wrestler, then yes, Osprey could continue doing this. But he's going to the. But you already knew he was going to the main event of the biggest show of the year in the company. So therefore, you don't need to have second thoughts about this or whatever else. You need to just not. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying you need to save it for a critical moment to, and the moment needs to be, you get your next title shot. You don't do it. You get put behind the eight ball and then you come back and then you finally hit it and then you win. I thought it was excess upon excess. And it was like, it was just too much. Like, and it was like, and I love matches that have too much, but it's like, Something I, about this just didn't feel right as I was I, watching. I agree with you when time. it comes to the Valley thing of uh, the stop and the start, and that came down. That came down to stamina. And like, uh, you, okay, so I think when you you made your comparison. You compared it to the uh, Danielson in uh, Hangman match that went to the draw. Uh, the reason why I like this match so much is because I was comparing. I was comparing it to Danielson or Hangman. I was comparing it to MJF versus in another match he had that went an hour. I compared mm-hmm. it to the Danielson match. Now I think the first half hour of that match you can just skip it and then you watch the last half hour overtime and it's incredible Mm -hmm. and for me for a match that went 65 70 minutes if the first half hour of it is not worth watching then on a rewatch i'm I'm, just from a rewatch i'm like no thanks no thanks uh but watching this match in I'm watching, like, I'm looking at, I'm watching how it go in the ebbs and flows of it. I'm like, okay, the, to me, it's apparent. I thought they were going to the title of a draw. They get out of it. They went just short of it by a few seconds or, or whatever else. So they basically went to, to, they went to, they basically went to the title limit, right? So I was, I was locked in for the 60 minutes. I thought that this, I thought this held my interest for the 60 minutes throughout the duration of all 60 minutes better than that Iron Man match. Right, so mm-hmm. for me, I, that's what I was comparing it to. So I thought for MJF to do, go another hour, another hour long match, I thought this was the better of the hour long match for the duration of all sixty minutes of it. So for me, I, I that's why I liked it so much. But I'm with you. I, I you know, I, I was loving this match, Rich. You can attest, I was loving this match. And then it was that finish. I was like, I'm docking it. I'm docking it. Sorry. And I think you know, if you're you're gonna do the big sixty minute match with Will Osprey, right, and, and MJF, right. You need to make sure that it almost has a reason to go sixty. It just went sixty minutes on a whim. Like maybe it was a. Do you think it was a race play? Absolutely, absolutely, and yeah. it worked. It, it, it worked. But yeah. going into if it's like didn't yo, the Danielson and didn't the Danielson and uh, Hangman match do the same thing where like it, it held the rating? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then um. I think, you know, like, in my perspective, it was like, yo, this could have been built up as, like, you know, I challenge you to, like, you know, like, like you don't have more stamina than me. You don't have, like, you, you like, you build this up to it makes sense that you go 60 or whatever. Mm-hmm. You just do 60 like this. I think it just kind of exposes everything else on the show. It's like, yo, why the fuck, like, did you... Why did it take you sixty minutes to like be in there with MJF almost, and then like uh, it's just it's just well, me, I it, mean, wasn't, it wasn't a time well, or place. Well, I don't I don't know exactly what you mean by that because you mean because MJF is a, is a shit heel. Yeah, it's like it's like all right, like you like Osprey's like you you, you face Brian Downson on pay per view the other uh, month, you beat him in thirty five minutes or what, whatever the fuck they did. Kanos gets to catch the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you were in there for a half hour with Swerve, twenty seven minutes with Swerve. Yeah, pay per view main event, and then it just artificially just jumps to sixty without any rhyme or reason. It's like, did you just meet your match? Like, did, like, and why? And if you did, this could have been, I think, highlighted that it was going to be this even match going into it like not to where people even necessarily expected they would go 60 well, but it was like oh like it, it feels like there's been a proper build up for this well i mean 
I don't know. I'm a, I'm on two minds. Right? Like I get I get where you're going with that, but MJF was champion for the for a year. So I mean, it's not like it's not like they're not presented as two. It's not like they're not both considered main eventers in in AEW. Mm. Uh, but I get what you're saying. Is like. If you're going to go an hour, maybe promote it more beforehand instead of going into it after basically like, I mean, that was a killer angle they did, but like, they, uh, they basically did it in one week when it's like, that really should have been a match that was on all in and then like, and not go an hour at all in, but like, go for a certain amount of time, do it in half the time or whatever else, have your match and then like, go meet each other again and then do your hour long draw or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, like fundamentally speaking, I, I'm I'm against pretty much anybody going more than thirty minutes. You know that I've said that for years. Like unless you're Os- unless you're Okada in Omega, don't you don't need to be going that long. Like nothing nothing is very few things are actually that good to go past a half hour of pro wrestling matches singles match. So um, I thought this match for for the length it went like did very well achieving the goal of like having to go against those kind of um constraint or not constraints but uh, that that kind of a uh, work that kind of hurdle they, or heel they have to climb. And that's why I was impressed with it. Um, but yeah, ultimately it's just, you know, a lot of the things you have issues with, I'm, I agree with you. I just don't agree with it as much as you are to where it's like, Hey, this shit, this shit like felt like it was hanging out there for a minute. Like I, I see the points why they were stopping, but like in my mind, I was like, okay, cause I know they're going an hour. Like if you're someone that's watching, maybe that bothers you more, but like I, I picked it quick. I picked mm-hmm. it quick. And then, and yeah. I remember I picked it quick when it came to uh day or with Danielson, like most of these draws in AEW because of how the pacing of most matches are, Insane for stardom. Like when the, when the, when the pe- when the pacing's off just a little bit, he's like, oh, they're going to time a draw. I just know this. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's you know, it's just a, a thing of being a jaded or jaded wrestling fan. <laughs> so, but at least I made the best of it. and Enjoyed the hell out of that match. Yeah. So Max wins the uh, international title. He is getting booked for CMLL. So That's God help, it. God help us all. I do, yeah, I do like them. the part where, like, you know, similar to the Danielson Iron match, where he's selling the water bottle. And the exhaustion of going through the match, like he did that at the end of or towards the end of the Osprey match, and then at the end he has the oxygen uh, thing to breathe, and then like he does the promo for CMLL and he's in the cold tub. I I do like the part where like he's talking cash shit, like he's saying one thing, but his body and, and physically he's doing another, and his acts are saying another. Like he went, he was out here getting his ass worn out by Osprey, and like as you can see, like that man said, I'm the smartest person pro wrestling, and he hit that man with that fucking uh. <laughs> that was a great spot. With that, with that hidden blade through the ropes, bro. I thought I, I think it's my favorite hidden blade of all time. That shit, that <laughs> camera was fantastic. Oh, I loved it so much. And like, I, like, it was so satisfying to see this smug. Pre- I'm the, that's why the smug for a soon. Bow just took his head off. Awesome. Yeah, uh, Seamus Nova says saw dudes mad that since it was dynamite two fifty, the time should have gone to others. I, you can count me among them. This should have gone don't, like a half hour. Don't disagree and, at yeah, all. And you know, I was like. I think you could have got more of the roster on the show. Also, uh, Rich, do you know what the time limit was for international t- title matches? I did not. Neither did I. If they had told you 30, would you have known the difference? No. Because isn't the TNT title like 20 minutes or 30 minutes? Or no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because I'm, I'm confusing. I'm confusing with non-title matches. Like the like the Non-titles Cody, the Cody like and, and Darby first match, that went to a 20-minute time limit draw. Like... Yeah. It needs it needs to be like the world title is the only title and the women's title are only titles that can go to a whole hour draw. Everything else should be a half hour. The starter yeah. rule. So you yeah. can actually do this and actually make more use of your time. Like there is no need there's no need for every single one of these belts to have hour long time limit draws. None. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so he's gonna see MLL. God help us if he does some racist shit and like <laughs> and xenophobic shit in an election year or so bro god good bro, luck that man finna go over there and say all types of crazy shit about uh Atlanta jr yeah. i can see it now will he wear some burro i'm gonna say yeah because i remember he was wrestling mlw versus savio Vega, and that man was doing a fucking dance so yeah i'm gonna say yeah that's funny um so, so yeah, the dino, dynamite no, diamond no, no. ring. It can't be worse. Again. It can't be worse than Jeff Jarrett because he should know fucking better. That's why it's worse. <laughs> Jeff Jeff Jarrett's just old school, or old fool, as they say. Um, so there's a segment where the acclaimed speak to Mark Briscoe backstage. The tough acclaimed. They're wearing all black. And, 
I'm trying to take Max Caster somewhat seriously, and I'm struggling uh, to do it's so. It's the mustache. Yeah, it's the stash. He, he looks crazy uh, with that thing. So, like, um, Swerve walks in and was like, yo, I know we had our problems over the years, but I know what you're about, and you guys are tough. There's nobody to uh, go to war than, with than the ones you're going to battle with. And um, they're sitting back there with Briscoe, and I'm seeing those – uh, four and I'm like, all right, where's Darby? Like, and then that, that just stays in the back of my mind the whole show. Um, then we got uh, Chris Jericho TV time with the Learning Tree. Uh, basically berated the people of Little Rock, Arkansas, for their crime rate. Um, says that he's never going to miss another dynamite again. Recounts, you know, basically saying it's two hundred dynamite two fifty. Hopes he's on the next two hundred fifty yeah, uh, episodes. I, I, I chuckled. Bro, um, he, he says him and his, you know, he recounted ways that, you know, they beat down Hook, Shibata, and Samoa Joe, and, you know, tells everyone to listen to him so he doesn't have to do those kind of things, and who would do such a thing? And all of a sudden, Minoru Suzuki pulled up to Little Rock, Arkansas, with the New Japan logo on the back, which is hilarious for he, It's many always reasons. been a New Japan logo, though, but it's just funny. I guess it's funny because he continues to do it. Yeah. Yep, you know, and then he basically uh, gets in Jericho's face, says next week. So he gives him a piece of paper of the FTW title, Jericho versus Suzuki, Suzuki next week. That's a match they've wanted to have for years and years yep. at this point. Um, he shoved Jericho down and he waved by. I thought this is going to be pretty funny. Uh, I, I don't know what I expect from this match. I just I guess it's just going to be chops. That's all it needs to be, brother. Yeah, like when if you had to, look the, ever since 2018, if you told me they were gonna do a Suzuki and Jericho match, ever since I saw how he got down in New Japan, I'd be like, yeah, just just I know what I need Chris Jericho to do is go pull up. Uh, what is it? Uh, was it all together or not all together? But like right after the pandemic happened, New Japan came back. I need him to pull up that Minoru Suzuki and Yuji Nagata. I think that's from New Japan Cup. Yeah, made, and I just need to see. I just I need to watch that. That's it. Just re- no. It's, it's Ishii versus Nagata. I think. No, it's Suzuki versus Nagata. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just, just just watch that. That's it. I ain't saying you got to replicate. I'm not saying move but move, but like, just, that's general gist. Like, and he kind of did, he more or less did that with, uh... With Copeland. Right. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or no, uh, Strong. Roddy Strong said they brought all around, you know, all around. Like, yeah, just go back. Painmaker Brawler Chris Jericho is the best Jericho we got right now over the last couple of years, right? Like, I mean, you also can do the if you want to say the All Japan All Japan Jericho too. That's, that's another my, one. That's my favorite. That's one. another one. But like, it all goes hand in hand. Like, we you need to go out here and be like, hey, fuck that line salt, get it out of here. German suplexes and he still do it. He, he, he still do it. Um. So you are no that, longer a counter wrestler. We're done with yeah. that. We're past that. So next was one of my favorite ep- uh, parts of the show. Uh, the Young Bucks and Kazuzuko caught a caught a promo talking about they got all the gold and the power. And next week, uh, Swerve is gonna get uh, beat up so bad he's gonna have to vacate the title. Then Mercedes Monet walks up on the Young Bucks and Kazuzuko Kata, and um, she she's talking to him and thanks him for banning Britt from ringside because she's about to do an open challenge. Uh, then Kazucho kind of like whispers in um, Matt Jackson's ear, and he asks to if, if, if Matt can ask her to do the dance. Um, uh, she does the dance, you know, and, and Kazucho kind of then begins, you know, loosening up the 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 uh, button on his shirt, sweating a little bit, and um, you know, I get it, Rainmaker. I do. I understand, Rainmaker. Um, and then I was like, yo, ain't, ain't Okada Mercedes type too? Look, <sighs> got look, money. There's, look, there's history here too. You know, when she walked yes, out after that man's yes. match that last year, that yeah. man was looking at her like, you know, look, uh, that wasn't my concern. My concern was, so Mercedes out here dance her white own request. That's, 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 she ain't never been no allegations. Damn it. Why do I want better for her than she wants for herself? Oh. I I saw this and I was like this is this is so funny. 
Um, I I know people will want Okada to be more serious and stuff like that, but look, man, I've watched Kazuchi Okada for ten years. Like, I don't care about what everybody else thinks of, of, of Okada. Like, I've watched him for ten years. Uh, I'm enjoying the, the the display of range and another way to entertain me. And I think I think it's funny, and I enjoy it. Sorry, I think it's funny, and I enjoy it too. But I also want to see him have kick-ass matches, and I want to see the Young Bucks have kick-ass, ma- kick-ass matches. I want to see Jack have kick-ass matches, and I don't know if it's the injuries. I don't know if uh, it is something going on where they're just trying to keep all their eggs in the basket for a storyline for somebody to come back or not. Nudge, nudge, me, win Kenny Omega, but or even Heyman and Page. But it feels like we're in like a you know. When I say this with people, it's like, all right, you got what you got going. Like, when are you going to get to the the actual thing you you're here to sell, which are the matches and the and the tension between opponents? And um, I, I, you know, with Okada, he don't really have a you know a budding rival for his title necessarily. And like with the Young Bucks, is like I I do not care for the acclaimed as a con- title contender right now. Um, they're in, you know, they're going to be all in the cage and I can't wait to see that match because those matches are always crazy, especially when the young bucks are in it, um, or the leader in it. But, you know, relatively speaking, compared to the other bills for, uh, for this this is the weakest one they've had. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, you know, there's a little bit of calendar syndrome on this, I think. And then there's like, um, you know, I I feel like some of the, the most interesting things of, of this thing like I, I feel like once that everybody's locked in the cage, they're gonna get to where they're trying to go, right? Like I think you know, Swerve and Darby staying together is pretty interesting. I think you know, Kazushi Okada possibly being in the position to have to run the Razor is cool. We know the Bucks are great <sighs> in these type of matches. Um, Swerve and Heyman, if they get close to each other, it's gonna uh, go off. Of it's gonna go off. Or if they get se- if they stay separated from each other somehow, I think that's gonna be almost like. That's going to make you want it even more. And they're, I think they're definitely going to have an interaction based off of how they just teased it and didn't even touch each other uh, at the end of the show. Yeah. Like they, they know what they have in it. They just delayed it because like it makes more sense for Hangman's journey to build as a character instead of immediately going to this. Um, And then from there, we got uh, Mercedes Monet versus Nyla Rose. I uh, thought it was a good match. This was, uh, you know, Nyla gets her early title shot in the rain. One of those. Uh, but it's good to see her as a baby face. And like, I thought her Mercedes kind of had an enjoyable match here. And mm. I thought it was one part that was funny. Like she was trying to DDT Nyla and Nyla was like, are you insane? Essentially. And like, <laughs> she's just like held on or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, and Rich said, like, need to look out to see if they're going to do the Manami Toyota victory star drop. That didn't happen. Nah, for the best, nah. for the best. Yeah, um, Mercedes ended up winning uh, by using the newly named statement maker. They got a they got a workshop dad, you know. Yep. Why don't they just call them like like money money talks or something like that? Like something like that. She's got a lot in the money talks or something like that. I don't know something. There's it's it's a money based like move. There are thousands of phrases yeah. that you you can come up with. Yeah, so, the cash out. Look at that. She's got her in the cash out. Yeah, like her submission. Oh no, I'm sorry. The submission. Say she got her in the vault. Oh my god, the money clip. God damn it. The Monet clip. Oh, that's the Monet crazy. clip. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, then Mercedes. Walks up on somebody sitting in a sting mask, which I I love. Like use the sting mask gag to the end of time. Look, if Sting dies, still use the sting mask gag. I don't care. <laughs> My, the thing that got me was is like, didn't Darby do the do the sting mask like in the last like couple months? Yes. Yeah, to go to to get to Anna in the arena, right? So I was like, okay, that happened. And then I see, I was like, oh, it's Brit. Okay, fine. Like in yeah. you know, I think she was banned from she was banned from uh what was this what was the, the, the legally she got around to not be banned or whatever what happened? Like what was, she was it? A fan. She she snuck in, she was a fan. No, she no, she bought a ticket. She bought was ticket. banned from out from like the locker room, but like I think she bought a ticket she could show up. So she pulls back the sting mask, uh shoves her down, security jumps in the middle, Mercedes takes off running, 
and the building's hot and every angle that these two have done together has been yep. similarly hot. Yeah. So, yeah, it's working. It's working. My concern still the concern that bell ringing. <laughs> but so far they're doing really well right now. We got a recap of Mariah May uh turned on Tony Storm. Um then she came back from commercial. Um they showed Jack Perry cutting a promo on Darby. He says he didn't give a shit about Brandon Color. Yep. And he, he showed him he would brand the color's ass too. Yeah. And um Color earned his check this week. He threw him through the boiler room and you know onto one of the tanks. Told Darby to find him tonight. He'll show him what a real sacrifice looks like. I thought he was gonna say show him what a real man looks like. I was gonna, gonna put Jack in a real man Hall of Fame immediately. Um, from there we got uh Tony Mariah May came out and she did Tony Storm's entrance. Now, I did not really pay attention. She did the Thomas to to Tony Storm entrance. Yeah. Yes, and she was dressed up as her. Yep. Everyone is talking about how bad this promo was. I didn't pay as much attention to it, so I just I didn't grasp how quote unquote bad it was. But it, it just was like it, it apparently it died. It 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 was lifeless. It was lifeless. Um and like it just it just didn't work. It didn't work. It was a miss. Dr. Larry, Mariah's showing feet for free. God I mean, Tony Storm been out here barefooted for the whole duration of this whole time to sing. Like that that it was leaving it was, money it was on true the table. To the parody. Or the imitation, Le sorry. Leaving money on the table. Look, some of y'all freaks out there like feet. We are not among them, but look, I, I, I know, I, am, look, I, I know, I know, I know what, what, what the uh, One Nation Radio numbers look like. There's a percentage of y'all in there. Like, <laughs> look, um, I am very much against feet for me. Like, but I don't, I don't necessarily judge anybody that, that are into feet, but. Me, mm -mm. no, thank you. No, sorry. Tell me about this promo. Sorry, I said, tell me about this promo. I ain't got nothing to tell you. It was it just didn't work. It just didn't ah. work. Like I mean, it just didn't work. Like it just it. It was one of those situations where it's like, okay, we haven't heard much from her. This is her time to knock it out the park. People are expecting it after the big angle, and she didn't. She did not step to the plate deliver <clears throat> that way. Her delivery didn't work. She seemed like she was. uh thinking too much and then like even the content wasn't like on point that much it was just like okay like i feel like they're waiting tony's gonna have to carry this tony's gonna come back and, and talk about how she how her she was heartbroken she's gonna get her vengeance on her and and everything and then like we'll see how mariah reacts to that and maybe she can save it in that way but it, it was like after such a hot closing angle uh for that dynamite it felt like they threw water. It felt like she threw water on it. I don't think she did it on purpose. It's just it was a miss. Sometimes you miss. <clears throat> Some part of me thinks they could have uh, maybe came up with like a pre-recorded like kind of video where you think it's Tony, but it's actually Mariah. Like you shoot it to where like it's going up her leg, and like you see the blonde hair, you see whatever, and then it turns around and, it, and it's like it's caught up in like it's you know they put it in black and white. They're giving her kill, killer lines to say they're splicing in the attack, you know, from last week where she's uh -huh. like bashing her over and over again. And then she pops out essentially. And then she's, you know, and, and then be like next week, like I'll talk to y'all more about it or whatever. But, you know, there were a lot of people like, why didn't this open the show? Because, you know, how hot it was the week before. I was like, well, I guess we saw why it didn't, you mm -hmm. know, now. But um, I, I think there's like uh like this was an opportunity to, to slam it and you know it just didn't happen um yeah am i giving up on it no but Same. i i think there's uh tweaks that can be made that can like because if you if you attack somebody that hard there's so much you can get out of that right like like those type of vignettes you can do um you can have i don't know you can just have her have other people like like yo what you did is fucked up essentially yeah. and then like do like a mini program until she comes back and then put mariah over somebody else and have her beat them the similar way and like keep building it up i, I feel like that stuff's gonna come if it doesn't that would be i think uh another drop ball here i think but, i yeah. think they want because of how hot the angle was they felt that they needed to do it in front of a live crowd and i think that mariah just should have they should have had her sit down with jim ross or, mm -hmm. or or talk to Renee backstage or do a pre-tape in that way. 
she should have been pre-recorded instead of going out front, in front of a live per, in front of a live audience, and she just wasn't ready for it. Unfortunately, that's a good one, Doctor Larry. Cut up her clothes and burn them in the trash can. Um, you can just have her throw shit in a rental car, set the car on fire. Um, but I, okay, I'm looking through the comments, and now I can't stop looking at all the stuff that like Seamus Nova and Zekamaki are talking about. And that's that's y'all still on feet. <laughs> y'all still on feet. All right. <laughs> the feet boys. And, yeah, and, I, look, Zekamaki, Zekamaki tried to explain himself. He said, I just like women with pretty feet, nothing more. If it was nothing more, you didn't need to type that. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like hit dog hollering. <laughs> Zek, you my dog. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I, if you like feet, good. Good for you. Because I, cause I ain't fucking with them. That's, that's funny. Oh. Um, they talked about the Bang Bang Gang getting stripped of their belts on Collision. Yeah, I wouldn't show that. Um, then we got Swerve versus Kazushiro Okada. What we got was was good. It was like they were warming up for something, but yep. you know we got the run in here. Yep. I, was, I was disappointed. I was so like, was oh, I. Man. I I didn't anticipate but that happening. Given thought- the time, given when the match got in the ring, it was like, oh, fuck, reason foot. Yeah, oh, it's, it's WCW like, right here. It's some WWE. Fuck you, mean WCW? Like I was like, hey man, I already like the NWO getting, ran in. Like Okada and Okada can't be swerving that amount of time, and Swerve can't be Okada that amount of time. They make too much money, both of them, for that. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the dynamic of seeing them in the ring uh, working together. It's just like cool matches. Like you know, I, I had a conversation uh, with Swerve. I don't know. Maybe the day of the match, uh, and I was like, or the night before, and I was like, bro, I was like, yo, think about like four years ago, like what anybody would have told you, you know, this match would be in the ring somewhere. I was like, you know, if you're in, you're in NXT, Zuzu Okada's in New Japan, it's the pandemic, it just feels worlds apart. And then like, just just think about like, you know, the journey that you've had, like, and then like, you know, self reflection essentially, and it's like, yo, this is dope. Like, I, I think this is really cool, and um. I hope we actually get the real match one day. Uh, they're going to be in the cage next week, and I think that's going to be it's going to be fun. I, I I hope somebody convinces Okada to run the Razor. Um, I'm not just saying it here right now. It's time, you know. Let's you know let's do the little poke, you know, you know. So yeah, you know, uh, somebody can help him. You know, I, I I don't know Okada's you know history with blading if he's ever done it before. So. There's, there's, uh, you know, who better than Swerve Strickland to, to show to show him how to, you know, uh, you know, with, with the CZW ties, you oh, know, oh. to show show him what was what. Oh, Connor's like, I don't blade. In fact, if you shoot head but me, you bleed. <laughs> and, and then you, ha- and then according to Dave Mills, you have to have your brain removed from from out your skull and then plug back in like as a, like as a fucking video game cartridge, like it's a ro- like it's the Rumble Pack on N sixty four controller. What the yes. fuck was Melzer talking about? <laughs> Did, did you see that video? Because um, collisions in Texas, right? They brought that out with the Von Erichs, and then uh, Kevin Von Erich put Shibata in the claw. Yes, like, and then he the sold it because I'm like, I'm like, how did that work on Shibata? He don't have no brain, so it, it shouldn't even, you know, register. Nah, his his cranium's weak because it got so it got cut open and then popped off. You know, he got. The top, the them doctors, the same uh, Shibata lot. They popped his top off like a Pringles can, <laughs> and, then, and, then hey. and then they, and then they detached that bitch, according to Melzer, and then plugged it right back into the socket. <laughs> yes, cover up that logo. So, go so call yeah. and send us no check. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted, man. The comment, Zekamaki back. Zekamaki yeah, said, he, he's "Man, I've, I've he's, let me just, just. I'm not gonna misquote him. Man, I've seen many a woman." Uh, pretty as I don't know what feet looking at if they rub themselves together, they will start a forest fire. I'm sorry, man. Um, I have two, and it don't really bother me because, like I said, I don't fuck with feet. You, you, you say you don't care about you say you don't fuck with feet. You do, cause if cause this won't bother you so much. <laughs> Stop. Look, man. If if you want look, if you want to put them toes in your mouth, good for you. <laughs> if you want if you want to put them toes in your mouth, good for you. I don't. I don't. I'll, so that such a thing would not bother me. It just wouldn't. 
Hey, hey, you know, there there was a song written by Ryan Kendrick or it was one God of the songs. damn it. And um, you know, there it used to go and looking at me like I don't know what to do with it. I'll tell you I'm acting a fool with it. That's what that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's what that sound like. He said, nah man, that's just standards, man. I look I get look, I think we judge women too harshly in all regards. But one thing I ain't finna be like is oh, oh damn Rihanna got some rough, got some hooves, so therefore I can't I can't fuck with it. Nah man, that's still Rihanna. I don't, I don't give a good goddamn. It's still Rihanna. So you you get my point. What do you say? Sock up. What do you say? I said put put a put a sock on. That's a, you can always keep the socks on. That's always been the thing. Oh man. Well, like just just keep the keep 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 the feet covered, the blankets over the top of the feet. Yeah, know. that is an option. I, look, um, if you got that you got that big a problem with feet, you can do the same thing that you always did when the other problems you had. Where you still follow through, turn the lights off, <laughs> light a candle. That, 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 that. <laughs> Have, do, do we need to move on? Do we need to move on? I mean, you know. Look, I don't know. Maybe the chat will let us move on. Maybe they won't. Oh, uh, Shamus Nova's crazy. He said, if she got hooves, I got horseshoes. That is wild. Yeah. These guys. These guys. Oh, um, wow. So, um, Swerve wins by DQ, obviously. Oh, yeah. We're talking about wrestling. Sorry. Yeah. Swerve Sorry. wins by DQ. The Young Bucks hit the ring, uh, jumped on my dog. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't really play that. You know, is. I, it, this, this is rough for me, man. You know, you know, swear on one side and Lee on the other side. Like, uh, I don't like this. You know, this, this is this is engineered to to pull me two different ways. Like, this this is fucked up. You know, um, but the acclaim then ran in the you know Jack Perry ran to even the odds. Mark Briscoe ran in. Everybody, you know, is the attitude era finish. Uh, big brawl. Hangman showed up, got face to face with Swerve. It got broken up, and then like I don't think we saw Swerve. I don't think we saw Hangman ever again. Yeah, they were they was out there fighting. Uh, I think Hangman and Briscoe were fighting. Um, then Darby Allen's music hits, and everybody's like, "Where the fuck is Darby Allen?" And all of a sudden, you know that man comes from the top. And yeah. I don't mean the top rope. That man, uh, basically, you know, that, that man inherits the zip line from Sting. Yeah. Loved it. Descended from the rafters, and the brawl continues, and, and we're out of time until next week. So, yep. um, you know, if you're going to use, you know, come from the rafters, I think that was cool. Um, yep. And, uh, you know, next week, blood and guts. So, um, I- who who's going to win this thing? I haven't really thought about it. It has to be Team AEW. I think the problem for me, um, it's less of a problem than it was with even FTR in Anarchy and Arena, because obviously, like, those guys have been with AEW for years now. Um, but it's still this, the problem of, like, it's AEW versus the Elite, which is, like, it's still a mindfuck for me, because, it's like, yeah. it's so, it's, it's the Elite versus all Elite Wrestling. Don't that sound dumb to you? But, um... But obviously, you know the elite are evil, and they're they're corporate, they're they're, they're corporate, or sorry, they're, they're evil authority figures. Uh, but I wish it was somebody except for the acclaim. But the acclaim is just AEW as anybody. It just is me being nitpicky because I don't want to see them, right? That but so. But what I will say is, I think the match will be great, and I think the match will overcome some of the issues with how this build felt, or how this build felt cold. Because I think once you get Hangman and Swerve in there, once you get uh, Swerve in the Elite in there, once you have Jack and Darby sell their match, once you have the Elite, in, I'm sorry, once you have the Young Bucks in the Acclaim sell their match, I think is I think it's all gonna work. I think it's all gonna work, and they're gonna get to where we're gonna get to. But like, I just think that the bill was like, lesser the match is gonna have to save it. I think the match will save it. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm ha- and you know maybe I'm being um, too optimistic, but. I just see it's it's the young bucks and swerve inside of in hangman inside of a cage and Mark Briscoe inside of a cage and Darby Allen and Jack Perry inside of a cage. Too There's no way this match ain't gonna be good. It's hell. Too many, too many great wrestlers, guys that like have put on the that line. Wanted, that, that 
love great big matches. They love big matches and also love to be in a situation where they can bleed or do stupid shit whenever they can. So yeah, I think the match will go off. Yeah, like um, <clears throat> I don't know what Darby Allen is planning to do. Um, <laughs> cough and drop off that bitch, get thrown off it. Everything's in play. Um, fr- from Darby. Uh, I'm looking to see something from the acclaim kind of in this too. Oh because, yes, because yes. obviously it's like, all right, you guys are clearly the fish out of water. Here. Yep, and it's like, all right, are you going to show us a side of you to where it's like, all right, you showed us that you guys can have a great match, and you know you have in ring uh, legitimacy if we stand you, you know, with with people. But it's like mm-hmm. now it's like, are you a fucking killer? Like, yeah. are you someone that? Like, yo, that's and, a dangerous person. Right. Like, and, they will fuck you up. Right. And on your team is Mark Briscoe, Swerve Strickland, and Darby Allen. Right. So either you got to, you got to, you know, step up or, or, or step aside. Um, right. Like, you might need to grab, you need to, when you go in there, like, Max Caster might need to, or Anthony Bones might need to go in there, go underneath the ring, grab some vice grips, and then, or some pliers, and then close the door and then grab one of their teeth and yank it out and be like, I'm, I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I ain't no bitch. Like you know, like, like oh no, like, oh you don't fuck with him. You know, because yeah. you got you got to choose your options. Those those two you choose over those other three. Well, yeah, you got to break the bottle over your head and say say let's go, motherfucker. Like, yeah, you know for yeah. those or um, I ask this just because it's war games. Is there a threat of anyone turning on their own team in this? Yes. I could see, I could easily see Heyman being pissed and, and, and do the same thing that Pac did with a uh, walk out. BCC, yeah, walk out, yeah, yeah. So um, you know, could could, could uh, cast return on Bones? Oh God, I don't want to see that match. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, and their, yeah. and their, their problem mainly isn't that them as a tag team is that they've been stuck in the trio shit with Billy Gunn. The faster they get the fuck away from them, the, the easier the easier it will be for them to try to salvage what has been them kind of being stuck in the mud. Yeah, and it's like they've held this match off, and I'm like, alright, are they gonna do um, Young Bucks and the, and the Acclaimed at All In? Are they gonna do it at All Out? Or is it gonna be like, you know, Young Bucks and FTR, the winner gets acclaimed at all out is is it a three-way match at all in like couldn't tell you it's all it's all up in the air right now right and i don't know if it is we got a month we got a month to figure it all out yeah i i I don't know know which way it's going but um we will see i hope the bucks you know got their working shoes on so yeah because they've been not as active so yeah (laughs) um but yeah that was that was dynamite um you you watch collision james right I only stuck around for bits and pieces, and I was tuning in and out between the WBA All Star Game. But like, I watched gotcha. the Ishii and um, Roderick Strong match, and it was like they had a lot of great ideas, but their chemistry was off, and their timing was off, and they missed things. But I really enjoyed the match, and then the fuck finish happened. I was like, "Oh, turning this off." Yeah. Uh, and like, oh, the main, oh, the main event is like is the Gun Club versus the Patriarchy. I was like, "How I watched that some other time." It was like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm looking at like the I'm clicking back and forth and I'm like, I'm watching clicking back and forth. Like I'm going back and forth on the on the, between the all-star game and and uh collision. I'm like, man, Arike going is going nuts. Nah. Sorry. That gets the big screen now. Sorry. So ultimately I didn't I didn't watch all of Collision. I mean I, I saw the part where uh Sky Blue and Hikaru Shida had a match and then Sky Blue tried to catch Sheeta on a uh, on a on a floor dive, and she ended up fucking up her leg, unfortunately. So, um, wish her the best. Wish she gets healthy. Um, there is a Britt Baker Hikaru Sheeta match booked uh, for this week on Dynamite. Yeah, so Sheeta basically uh, the ref told her kind of like to stall for time, so she kept stalling for time, and then at the end, uh, they put her up. They 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 called the match, and then they had her go up to the apron by after commercial break. They went into the apron with the ref and they raised their hand up on the stage. Um, not on the apron, but on the top of the ramp, uh, inches ramp. And then like later, cause I guess we were, it felt like they were funneling time back and forth because the timing got fucked up on the show because of the injury. Mm-hmm. And like they gave Sheeta a promo where Sheeta basically cut like a more kind of heelish promo saying like, Hey, like I, like I, the only time you ever really matters when I made you bleed or whatever else. And I'm, you know, I broke your nose or whatever. And so I want to match. So 
Sheeta's a tune-up for Britt Baker on the way to Mercedes. Yeah, and I think Sheeta's headed towards a heel turn, and um, I mean, you know, I, I welcome it. Yeah, she she looks like a she looks like a a boss character in a fighting game now. Yeah, so she needs to basically come out. I and guarantee you, the cosplay some shit someone's gonna miss. Be like, it's it's this game, this that, video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's Tekken, uh, motherfucker. Like, I never played. Yeah. Tekken. <laughs> I never Straight played out, Tekken. out, I out of, t- of your I, know, I just know that yeah, King's a, a bitch to play against against in the CPU. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Yakuza series. Yep. See, there you go. Yeah. But um, yeah, I I don't really have uh too much more uh, on that, but uh, it looks like a big show this coming week too. Obviously, Blood and Guts, Jericho Suzuki, and the Brit and Carl Sheeta. Yep. Uh, I imagine that there will be something else added. Um, but you know, it, it, leading up to the road to all in seems promising. Uh, I I think you know there's you know hopefully Danielson comes back. Uh, next week or something like that, and I, I don't know if he he will play any role in the Blood and Guts match, like maybe even before it or something like that. And like, yo, walk up on sword. No matter no matter what you think you're doing right now, like you you know we 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 got somewhere to be in six weeks six weeks or whatever. <clears throat> um, yeah, he'll Rio and he'll Yuga all to get. Oh my god, <laughs> why I wanna, take- why I want to turn great baby faces evil. Damn, I would turn. I would take Riho being a heel just because it'd be funny. Because uh, because of the look of she's re, she's she's no, she she's, just wears all black and then just you know. You think it's hilarious because she's so fucking small wrestling and these bigger wrestlers that small. That's what it is. You, you want the comedy aspect? The, or sorry, the absurdity of it. I think the absurdity gets. I think the absurdity will get old quick though. That's kind of where I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah. heel Joshi fashion. Let's go. Uh you're gonna make your damage that. control jokes now. Yeah, careful with that. Like heel Joshi fast. Let's go, sir. I are you unaware of this thing called anal tie? It sucks sometimes. <laughs> you, know, you, you better be careful what you wish for. <sighs> um. So uh, they put that dump Masamoto thing on uh, Netflix. James, are you gonna be watching the dump Masamoto story? I'll watch it because like it ain't like I gotta watch the footage of the matches. So. You know, uh, um, so I'll I'll see what it is. I'm I'm assuming it's gonna have translations or uh, subtitles of it, so I'll watch it. Sure, why not? Oh, okay. I I thought it was actually like an American show. That I didn't know. Kinda, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. So I just knew it was um, coming for a long time, and they finally showed like the like the footage of it or whatever else or stuff about it. I was like, oh, that's cool. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, I guess we can wrap it up, and uh, you know. Take us home. Yeah, I mean, well, do you want to plug uh, your stuff one more time? Yeah, man. One lifetime worldwide.com. Get your merch. Get your merch. Make sure you check out uh, the interview. Uh, what part of my fresh uh, comes out Thursday? Uh, AW Unrestricted last week. AW Who We Are Volume Two produced pretty much the whole project. Uh, a lot of positive feedback on it. Run the streams up. Uh, this is just really, you know, one of the cooler things i've ever been a part of in my music career and it's just like yeah man i you know i didn't know these opportunities were out here for me like and these are things i've always wanted to do you know when i was growing up as a kid i love wwf aggression and you know i don't have to i don't have to work with wwe to do this kind of stuff it's amazing i I don't have to feel like I'm, i'm contributing to the sex trafficking uh culture so, um, you know, this I feel better about it. Y'all should feel better listening to it. All that. So they they, they green lighted it, and uh, th- I think it's just really cool. Like, it, it, if people actually like sit and like listen to it, because like you know, it's easy for these things to like fall under the radar. We we know about you know sometimes the promotion isn't the strongest. Like even for like the wrestling, sometimes on the shows, yeah. so it's it's even harder. But um, it was cool to watch the main event and see the graphic up there of like you know the project I, I essentially produced uh, on there. So hopefully, uh, if you haven't had a chance to hear it, check it out and you know let me know what you think. You know what your favorite tracks were, uh, who who was on it that that impressed you, different stuff like that. A lot of people are loving the Will Nightingale song, uh, and shout out to y'all for for digging it. So, um, yeah, that's it. All right, uh, 
Thanks for listening, y'all. That's the end of the show. Be sure to rate this one app you're using to listen to this with. Uh, if you are watching from the stream, go to the podcast uh, and then go to the show notes and go to the Red Circle link and you can donate there. And be sure to listen to other shows on the network besides One Nation Radio. You have Keeping It Strong Style, All Things Elite, MSW Adventure, Russell Art with Chris Things, Tunnel Talk, and the Trish and Sarah Wrestling Podcast. Thanks for listening, y'all. Later. Peace.